introduce you the head basketball coach at the University of Missouri, Coach Frank Haith. Press. Let's go play a game. Uh, it's truly an honor and uh, to be here with you today. I, I feel like I'm the luckiest man in the world. Um, I've felt the passion already, and that's why I'm here. If you allow me to be a part of your life, I'm a pretty good guy. We're going to do things the right way. We're going to do it with integrity. We share the same passion. I, I, you know, Mike told me, he said, they're going to love you. And so you lied to me, Mike. Some people don't love me just yet. Um, I already know that. We have a really good basketball team. And, and I want to say this, too. Mike Anderson did a hell of a job here. He, he what he's did here for five years, he, he took, he's taken his program to be very competitive nationally. And... Um, he has recruited very well. Uh, the, I was so impressed in meeting these young men this morning. We have great, great people, along with being really, really, really good players. And that, um, I'm excited about the full package we have here. We have a total package. We good? Thank, Thank you. Thank you. And it just went straight to the hospital which is concrete, was lifted off the ground and moved five feet. What we were able to do, our presence, would bring awareness to the situation, and that's what we wanted to do. I, I don't feel like we did a lot, but in, in, in their eyes, we did a whole lot for that community, just in 40 minutes of basketball. No adversity we can go through this year will be close to what those people in Joplin went through. Our head coach of Missouri is named Frank Hayes. Coach Hayes. This is Coach Hayes. How are you doing, guys? I was hopeful that we can have a life skill lesson here with our players and, and a lesson of giving back and being a part of community and helping community. Keep working hard on the court, in the classroom. And the way they responded and the way they're still Joplin proud and Island and welcoming us into that town was, um, was definitely something I'll, I'll never forget and definitely cherish. Well, on behalf of the state, I want to thank you and the program. University of Missouri has, has raised a lot of dollars, has raised a lot of awareness, uh, uh, but most importantly, you've given these folks hope to, hope to stick with it. We're saving a town. Frank Haith wondered what he and his program could do to help. Thanks to an NCAA waiver that allowed the Tigers to play a third exhibition game, Missouri was able to play at Missouri Southern. The game raised $100,000 for the relief effort, although the estimated total monetary benefit could wind up being between $500,000 and $2 million. The fact that we, could, we came here and it was a sellout crowd, you know, when we thought about putting this, pros, this, this thing together, Obviously, we had no idea we'd get national exposure out of it, and that's a plus too because we wanted to bring awareness, uh, you know, to the to the situation what happened May 22nd back then. But obviously, I think getting national exposure is just a huge plus uh, for this event. ESPNU helped with the game's visibility by televising the game. ESPN Sports Center anchor and Missouri grad John Anderson was the play-by-play -play announcer. You can rebuild the drugstore. And oh, it's going to take a while. You can rebuild the school and the hospital, and it's going to take a while. But the trees that are lost, you know, that kind of the, the actual physical landscape is generations from looking like it was. And that's what I think is so striking is how the destruction is, but just how barren it is where that, that tornado ripped through. 
Missouri Southern is a Division II school ranked number four in the preseason. The Tigers had little trouble with the Lions, rolling to a 114-68 victory. It was more than just a game, though, and had an impact on all involved. Yeah, I'll never forget this game. I'll never forget the, I, I, I'll never forget the weekend here more than the game. I never forget the kids' faces. I never forget seeing that high school. I never forget seeing trees that are like barren and the houses are gone and wiped out. I never forget that more than a game. For the Big 12 Digital. All we got on three. One, two, three. All we got. It was kind of felt like a home game. Um, every basket or every stop, someone was cheering. I'm sure that a lot of Missouri fa Southern fans are also Mizzou fans. And Each one of those young men, they were very grateful for the opportunity and for us and, and very thankful for us uh, being there. Being a home state kid, um, me being from Missouri and being able to go down there and do anything I can just to get back. Yeah, I was definitely proud of my uh, team my university, my state. Marcus Denman averaging 17 points per game. That's about six minutes from tip, guys. Coming up next from the beautiful Sprint Center here in Kansas City, Missouri, semifinal action from the progressive CBE Classic. Marcus Denman and Missouri. Tim Abramitis and Notre Dame in a clash between two unbeaten teams early on in the season. Sprint Center, it's the progressive CBE Classic time for the semifinals. Undefeated Notre Dame, 4-0 so far this year, taking on 21st-ranked Missouri. The Tigers are 3-0 in the toughest lows here with the 2011 progressive CBE Classic. You're looking at the Sprint Center in downtown Kansas City, game one. The first semifinal, the trifecta. On the other side, the leading scorer returning in the Big 12, Marcus Denton. He's a driving, slashing, multi-talented perimeter player. He can flat out score, Dan. Impressive for Missouri, a very small team. Four guards and Ricardo Ratliff, really the only true front court player on the court in the starting lineup for the Tigers. For the Irish, this is Tim Abramidis' first game this season. More on that coming up. Also, Eric Adams to the Irish team. But as a whole, they are recovering. We are underway with Notre Dame. Jaron Grant getting the tap, missing the layup, and the rebound coming down to Ratliff. You know, Grant gives him this fill. That is Matt. Nice look inside to Ratliff in a Missouri lead. You know, Ratliff gets the deuce, but that was a terrific pass. Good boy would love him. We'll be doing the next game. He's got his masters already. Marcus Denman, the senior from right here in Kansas City. To Missouri, Frank Haight from the University of Miami. He'll play a different style than Mike Anderson did. Anderson now at Arkansas. Not as much full court pressing, but still. Because their inside game is really shorthanded. Ratliff, the only big guy on the team. Nice spin move, and he drops it in. Got a lot of emotion on the floor right now. Ratliff, good position down low again, and another jump hook. Great post position inside. I think we're going to leave a long jam. Matt Pressy the kick. Ratliff, the, the look inside. Fade away by Kim English, a senior from Baltimore, who's off to an incredible... jury has got the ball. Michael Dixon into the game, number 11 for the Tigers, off to Phil Pressy for the driving lane. Nice little drive by Pressy. Dixon comes in, he's like the energizer guy, man. He Side, finally misses one, rebound Tigers. We've got a strong body, very physical body. Nice cross-court look, English dumps it down, Ratliff lays it in. Nice look by English, unselfish basketball. See, I think a lot of teams get away. That's one of the strong suits, shooting the basketball. Pressy driving again. Count the basket. They're attacking. They got an attacking style offensively. They are multi deep on the perimeter. Very similar to Florida. Gators are very loaded on the perimeter as well. Look the quickness of the Missouri Tigers, Dick. Attacking the glass, man. Just attacking height. Inducted yesterday. Yep. Even though Bob's been in so many Hall of Fames and so many times, uh, uh, he's been honored. But. Uh, Right up in his face, and that's what they talked about in the locker room. Nice cut, nice pass. 
Great Steve move. Moore finds Marcus Denman. It's an 11 2 Missouri run. So many guys just stare at the ball. They stare at the ball. Bam. Layup. And the free throw good for turnover ratio, and he is their starting point guard this year. 2.6. Unbelievable to one. Did a really great job in this year. He's on that's what's in the day. Denman, tough one from the baseline, gets the bounce. Shooters get a bounce. Yep. Shooters get a bounce. Special, special college player. And that was the reason for the creation of the National Collegiate Basketball Hall of Fame. Was put on one side of the zone to get three against two. Bill Pressy. Hey, their guards are impressive. They really had a multitude of guards that they can hurt you with. There'll be mismatches at both ends of the floor. Dixon goes around Connaughton and lays it in. Can't play a one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. Too quick. Yeah. Too quick. That first step, they just exploded right by us. 94-81. English in traffic. And the layup on a beautiful feed converted by Matt Pressey. That's like a fast break drill. You run in a trans high post area where you can use somebody as a passer. Missouri shooting 68 percent, and that number goes up wow. even higher. They're now at 70 percent, 14 of 20 from the field. You're going to win a lot of games. Shoot. Wow. Moore inside. Nice move. That was a big plus because they're expecting that in the Moore. They're expecting him to get shots. All the great coaches, and he's something in the Hall of Fame, our own Robert Montgomery Knight, their kids took good shots. And if you take good shots, you got a chance to win. Because even a Dan Schulman and a Dickie V <laughs> could make open shots if you get good shots. Such a, <laughs> a lucky. Good hands by Moore. Look at the speed by Denman. Can't beat him in his foot race. He's too quick. He is too quick. They utilize that to their strength. Loose ball. There's the dump down. There's the quickness. I mean, he looks like he play halfback. Brian Kelly would like a guy like that running the halfback for him. For the fighting Irish and Notre Dame. we got a big game coming up with Stanford. Denman, first team All Big 12 a year ago, made 45% of his threes and averaged 17 points per four from the field, rather, four for five from the line tonight. Show you the depth of the big on Syracuse preseason up near the top, and right now both ranked in the top five in the nation. I'm going to tell you, he's going to really be good when they get all in. Like he hasn't skipped a beat, missing the first four games of the season. English for three. Show Came no into the game, Dick. 13 out of 21 from three-point range on the season. Pressing normally a good ball handler in that situation. Give it up. Puts a lot of pressure on the ball. Oh, what a strip. What a strip. That's what a, a sequence for Phil Pressy. What a big-time play. His daddy's going to say, I'm proud. It's Paul Pressy. That's what he did when he played at Tulsa. They won the NIT title. Played for Nolan Richardson. One of the only coaches to win in NIT, a junior college, and an NCAA championship. There he is, protects the ball, converts. Great Regards, he just picked up his third foul. Goes back to the bench. Atkins is forced to come back into the game, and he's got... Denman again. They can't play him, man. Cannot play him. It's an Eminem or mismatch, man. It's a total mismatch. In or not, and we are. Going to Lambeau Field, it's a lot of fun. Well, I put on my tweet, I said, you're the father of the day. <laughs> Green knocks down the first. Brooks out, Martin. I'd love to see you with the cheese head on. He, ben oh, had it on. I didn't yeah, have yeah, it. You had yeah, it on ben, too. No, no. Oh, ben, you had it on, too. <laughs> and Tennessee gave Duke quite a battle for about 30 minutes in their game tonight before the Blue Devils pulled away. Martin's got to get it off. And the first half will come to a close with Missouri leading by 15. Tim Abramitis with a spectacular return to the lineup for Notre Dame. But Marcus Denman and company lighting it up. Steals, layups for Missouri. And the Tigers score 52 points in the first half in front of a pro-Missouri crowd here in Kansas City. 15-point lead. Start from Mark Godfrey there. All right, Missouri up 15, shooting 63% against Notre Dame. And had a quick start before the foul trouble. Denman elevates and hits. Tell you one thing, you talk about playing with confidence. He's got a good bounce. Denman, Dixon, got another one. I tell you, the D&D &D guys, huh? Little D&D &D job. Also stop on the dime. Quick timeout by Mike Bray.
Last year, coaching yeah. bodies from Notre Dame. They're waiting for the breakout. Mike Bray can comfortably go eight deep right now. Look at this good deep position. I mean, look at how deep into the key Ratliff set up. He's deep in that post area. Good screen there by English. Eventually, Denman gets open. They can't miss. I think one thing I think Doug Gottlieb in the studio has got to like this guard play. And I know he's a competitor. And he said, hey, I'm going to put the uniform on and challenge some of these guys. <laughs> when I played at Oklahoma State. What? He was quick, but I don't know if he was just a torn ACL. The man at the line, Steve Moore, becomes a much bigger factor. Instead of getting maybe some scraps of minutes here and there, there's the injured Bowers who will redshirt and come back next bounce per game. Moore becomes a pretty significant factor. They need him off the bench. 12, 15, maybe more minutes per night. Because they're terrific. They are terrific. Off balance runner by Denman. Let me do it at all. Mr. Golick, a former star. That tells you enough. Kids know how to play to come out of that. High school. What a Slow. first step by Dixon and the wide open lay in for Kadeem Green. Tell you what, the Green gets the layup. Take a look at some unselfish basketball. There's Dixon with the little dish to his buddy, Mr. Green. Unselfish. Really be pleased with their performance tonight. Phil Pressy at the line for the Tigers. One of our game day games this year will be Kansas at Missouri, the rival. Years, won over 390 games, almost 20 a year, six years, he won 20. High off the glass, Kim English with a basket. Tell you whether it's English, Dixon, Deadman, they have such a group, they're ready to turn the corner. That's part of a doubleheader, right? Purdue also plays Butler. Yeah. You know, Maryland, you mentioned them. It's going to be one of those years people are going to have to be patient. And they can't expect a new coach, Mark Turgeon, to come in. They lose Jordan. Yes. Oh, what a great job yeah. keeping that ball alive. Ratliff. Big guy, like coast guard. to coast. Wow. Wow. He's making like a guard. I will never forget in Kansas City was a high school game I did and a young kid by the name of Shaquille O'Neal ripped it off the glass and went the length of the court like that and I went absolutely ballistic. If you want to see it, go to YouTube and you can see it. Oh, wow. Well. I'm not saying he's Shaquille. <laughs> I'm not saying he's Shaquille. Look at this guy. That's a game of horse, baby. Game of horse. See the floater. Yes. What a night he's having. Ratliff kicks it back out. English. Can do no wrong, man. They can do no wrong. They got guards that can shoot it. They got guards that can drive it. They got guards that can D it. Look at that speed. Look at that speed. Up, up, and away. Mike Gray told me before the game how concerned he was. About Matt Pressy again, really looking for his shot tonight. Wide open. I mean, that was a wide open jump shot. No joy, the performance of their Tigers tonight. Well, if they didn't enjoy this, something wrong with them. Are you serious? Are you serious? That is just emblematic of the night it's been. It's been all Missouri Tigers. And the Irish, their first loss of the season. And Missouri making a major statement here in the Sprint Center tonight, advancing to the championship game tomorrow night of the Progressive CBD Classic against the winner of our next semifinal between Cal and Georgia. A brilliant performance. I think Mike Gray's still a friend. Club played sensational, unselfish basketball. They shared the ball. They defended. And did everything a coach had planned in their preparation. All Missouri tonight winning by 29. We'll be back to wrap up game one for you right after this. Ending win, beating the Irish by 20 line, not 29 rather, led by Marcus Denneman. All of their guards sensational, forcing turnovers, getting layups, and really just with too much.
Here at the Sprint Center at Kansas City, what a final we've got for you tonight. The ultra-quick guards of the Missouri Tigers, who dominated Notre Dame at both ends of the floor in their semifinal win last night, take on a Cal team which knocked off Georgia and is expected to contend for the Pac-12 title this season with the championship of the progressive CBE Classic on the line. The championship game here in Kansas City. This is all a part of Feast Week. Presented by Lowe's, we've got the Missouri Tigers and that great basketball game. Tell you one thing, it will not be blowout city like yesterday. You look at Missouri, final year in the Big 12. For Marcus Denman, he shows you the ability to shoot the three. Then he shows you the medium range jump shot. He pulls up, then he shows you an explosive driving ability and that quickness as he can get to the rack, baby. And then you talk about Gutierrez. He can shoot the jump shot or he can take it to the goal, utilize either hand. I'll tell you one thing, he knows how to find open people. He has great versatility. He can defend, and tonight he will have a challenge because it's going to be head-to-head -head Gutierrez against Denton. Let's take a look at the starting lineups now. We'll begin with the Missouri, which is the visiting team, although they're playing in front of a lot of their fans here tonight. The Pressy brothers, Phil and Matt. Phil the sophomore, Matt a senior for the backcourt. Marcus Denman, one of the best players in the Big 12. Kim English, a sharpshooter, really a guard playing the power forward position. They're so small. And Ricardo Ratliff in the middle. For Cal, Brandon Smith, Jorge Gutierrez, Alan Crabb on the perimeter. Brian Shea, Clyde Owens, Tony Chiazza are the officials, and we are underway. We're going to have a good one here today, Dan. I feel it. I feel it. This little basketball team. Denman, guarded by Gutierrez, finds Ratliff on the inside for the and one. That was deja vu last night. Started the game very similar, going to the interior. Ratliff really their only inside player in the starting lineup. There's the catch. There's the finish. Terrific. You see Tom's ball going through the legs and then going through the uh -oh. legs of Cam. Uh -oh. you... yes. That's quickness, my friends. They're going to love them up there in Columbia. They belong in the Big 12. Double. A coach's dream. He does it all. Comes to play. A lot of intensity, a lot of emotion. Deep three by English. You can shoot it. You better match up. Scouting report says find him, match up, get in his face. English. percent. Wow. Turnover by Crab. Denman again. Look at the speed. Oh, he is quick. He is ultra quick. He has another gear, my friends. He has another gear. We got Carl Lewis. Let's get in a racing place. <laughs> Top to bottom. They've got as much speed as maybe any team in the country. They've wow. got an early lead. Wow. Wow. The quickness of Missouri and Marcus Denman as advertised. Yeah, look at him right here. Once he gets it, he's a jet with the basketball, and he knows how to finish. He knows how to finish. Keep your eye on number 12. He's a dazzler. He's sensational. Took a huge leap forward last year. First team all Big 12, almost 17 points per game, 45% from three. English passed up the three, steps in, and hits the 15-footer. He's got great touch. He's one of those guys. Pressy knows and understands how to play the game. Oh, nice backdoor cut. Nice backdoor cut. Great finish by Ward, who gave him quality defensively. Look at him moving his feet. Look at him moving his feet. So I'm not going to let you beat me. I'm not going to let you beat me to the spot. That is just terrific defense. Moving laterally. Good. Now Dixon to the line. I love that. I love working with young kids. Didn't like the paycheck though. He can shoot the ball. He really is. But right now, Mike says the scouting reports, people are fighting. Hobbs up top. Moore, the lob inside to Ratliff. Nice execution, high low to two big guys from a nice little tandem and such. To the line. Lawrence Bowers, as we mentioned, would have been a senior this year. He'll come back as a 50 year senior. Next year, average better than 11 points, six rebounds per game. Tore his ACL out for the season. Another injury just down the road. Mike Anderson in Arkansas. Former coach here in Missouri just lost Marshall Ken nine in a two-point loss against Vanderbilt. Who, by the way, when they get Azili back, they're going to just go on another level. Right now they're playing without their dominant. Time, time games will take us out to Tucson. We'll see Washington and Arizona end of January. We're going all count. We're going down Phil Pressy. Can't beat them in transition. Remember last night they were getting numbers? 
English. Oh, wow. He said, we can't beat him in transition, but I'll just beat him one-on-one. -on -one. Boy, the players, and I agree with them, thought they heard a whistle. Here's Crab curling off the screen. He turns it over. Pressy with Dixon. Pressy all the way. Oh, terrific move by Pressy. He sealed off the defensive player with his body, protected the ball, and as a T.O., baby, oh, my God, they are explosive. Run, baby, run. Look at his quickness, Dan. Look at him seal off. He's sealing off, protecting the ball. Such nice a crossover by Denman. Dixon open in the corner. They got weapons, man. They got weapons. Whether it be Dixon, whether it be Denman, whether it be Pressy, whether it be English. Quick glove. You know, they really wanted Matt Painter. He was the first choice here. They tried like heck to get him, but ultimately he decided to stay at his alma mater. And we get our first look at Kadeem Green, a redshirt freshman from Missouri, wearing number 15. Again, Ratliff with two. English off to Pressy. This is Matt Pressy who knocks down the jumper. Former junior college All-American. They got a variety of people that could score, Dan. For the first half. Moore for three. Oh, oh, he's feeling it. They love it on the bench. All the Tiger fans love it. Moore, he's going to become a big hero down in Columbia. Tiger basketball in good hands. They are on fire. Take a look right now at the big guy, number 32. Says, why not? Let me let it fly. Not the banana for three. Beautiful. Beautiful. How about the big fella? A lot of big fella. They love him. He's doing it all. There he's cutting without the ball. His left hand reverse layup. Now we're going to watch him with a deflection. And the hustle dives on the floor. Now we're going to watch him with a shot block. And a... Let me shoot a trifecta. I mean, like John Sutball, man. Shoot threes. The third three of his career. John Sunbold is no, a no, shooter. He's, he's, no, no, no. Trust me, no. But he's trying to Sorry, make John. Like, he's trying to make like him. I will tell you this. That's the first three he attempted. The, next. the foul on camp before the break. His second. Pressy knocks down the free throws. The lead has grown to 18 for Missouri. Very impressive. Very impressive. City, I think, is who they beat tonight. More than doubled them up. Dixon absorbs the contact and finishes. They got all kinds of guys that can finish. Denman, Dixon, I mean, England. Miller. Matt Pressy. Moore. Counter. What a half Moore's having. What a half. He looks over to coach and says, Coach, I've been sitting on the sideline. I think maybe I belong on the floor, coach. I think I deserve some PT, some playing time. Every player wants playing time, man. They want playing time. Lefty finishes with the right hand. Up two quick fouls in the first half, near the midway point of the first half. And Moore has been on fire. He's got a career high 10 points. And he has a Pac-12 just hasn't been at the level where you expect it to be. With all the great talent. Comes from the West NBA early. Last I saw, they're flashing scores here in the arena. USC was losing at halftime. And Cal will have a few seconds to try to get a shot off. Cobbs for three. The first half comes to a close. A career half for Steve Moore getting minutes because of the fouls on Radlett. Contributing and then some. In front of a pro Tiger crowd here in Kansas City, it is all Mizzou at the end of half number 45 to 26 on Cal at the end of the half. That, that's yep. routine, man. Yep. Denman. Wow. He's got range, he's got driving ability, he's got a pure scorer. He does a phenomenal job for us with ESPNU. Sent me a little text about their five-man class coming in next year. There's Denman now moving off the ball. You like to see that of a star play. A lot of star play edge over Missouri. English in the corner. They don't miss. English, Denman, Dixon. As those two teams buy for a spot in the championship game tomorrow night against Duke. Another bucket for Denman. Good effort by UCLA. Again. 
Ratliff with the follow. I tell you, Ratliff, and certainly when you think. Matt Frescia, former junior college All-American. He's a senior in his second year. Last year in Orlando, they played Notre Dame and Cal. You know what the score was at halftime? 21 five. five. Matt Pressy. Followed by English. Unbelievable. Look at English now. Making the transition to play the fourth. He raises his hand. Ratliff. Matt Pressy. What about the unselfish play there? Ratliff kicks it out to the open wing. A clinic. Find the open man. Score. And the Missouri Tiger fans give him a stand and all. Even the Diaper Dandy's dancing. Even the Diaper Dandy's dancing. This is a premier scorer. Leading returning scorer in the Big 12, as you mentioned earlier. Four on Gutierrez. Mike. Assistant with them as well. Denman makes them both. That old Dominion really challenged Kentucky. you coming to the Big 12. And TCU. So the Big 10 has 12 teams, and the Big 12 has seen. Pressy back to Moore. Moore to Denman. Back to Mr. Moore, inside out. He said he wants to go inside out as opposed to using the perimeter. But man, you get me those Hershey's and chocolate. I just love well, I'm a dick. Coach Knight left, left a couple of candy bars. Did I you saw grab them? Yeah, he gave them to me. Did he? <laughs> a little chocolate. My wife gets on my case. Because I, I get a dick. Kansas City. So, how much fun are Dixon and Denman and Moore, all Kansas City guys? Well, Probably see Jared Sutton a walk on deeper than they normally yeah, are this year. Especially on the perimeter. We got some people that can rotate. We got some experience. You mentioned it. Frank looks like that professor, doesn't he? He looks like a history professor on that side. 26 cruising. English, two more. You know, really, you gotta start going to that bench, man. You don't want to suffocate people. The guy next door, he's one of you guys. He couldn't believe he was listening to me as he scored inside. He thought it was, he thought it was sleeping. He said, I can't believe it. I'm hearing Dick Vitale in my sleep when I was on radio. <laughs> uh, Five minutes. He really, I, I really believe that. Yeah, they're hoping he'll be able to put on a little weight, get stronger. Ratliff, just too much for him on the interior. He has been impressive in his tournament. He has been impressive. Okay. Ohio State, part of the ACC Big Ten Challenge. Can't English. Wait. Get him out, man. Get some of these guys out. They are good. They are flat out a good basketball team. Andy Rosberg into the game for Missouri as well. Rosberg's brother will be there next year. Oh, Rosberg says, hey, I'm opening it up for my little brother. His brother's a big guy, gonna help them. They be, well, you know, you get a little dizzy sitting here after a while watching. You're, watching a, little, you're a little punchy, are you? Yeah. Green makes a free throw. He did last year for St. John's. Sutton's gonna shoot it. Oh! Oh! oh. That just makes the night a little sweeter. They're all dancing. They love Mr. Sutton. Two nights, Missouri has been absolutely superb. I can't even imagine with the kid Bowers, who was their best rebounder. Oh, <laughs> two in a row. Give me some playing time. This is Give me man. some playing time, coach. <laughs> coach, I can shoot the rock, baby. John Stokes, the rock. Give him some playing time. Thank you. What a blowout. What a sensational performance by the Missouri Tigers, beating a good team from Cal by 39, 92-53, to win the 2011 Progressive CBE Classic in front of all their fans here in Kansas City. This was an unbelievable performance over the last couple of nights by the Tigers, who have made a big statement here in November. Well, that Mike Bray can feel a little better right yeah. now. He yep. said, not only us, because he said last night, it was the divorce City against the JV. Well, what is it tonight? Varsity against the freshman team. Marcus Denman led the way, but he had a lot of help. What an incredible performance by the Tigers as the 21st ranked team of the country goes to 5-0. They'll be heading up the rankings when they come out at the beginning of next week. 92-53, Mizzou over Cal. NFL Live up next on ESPN2.
For Dick Vitale, I'm Dan Schulman. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Congratulations to Frank Hayes and Mizzou, and so long from Kansas City. One to the Jimmy V Classic, presented by Corona Extra, as we have a double header from Madison Square Garden in New York, where Jim Valvano called home. Missouri facing Villanova in game one, again from New York, where we gather each and every year to honor the memory of Jim Valvano. He's here tonight, including in game one, Villanova and Missouri. Missouri is ranked. They are unbeaten. This is going to be a very, very tough test for the Wildcats tonight. Well, you heard Bob Knight and Digger Phelps talk about the Missouri defense. They force 11 steals per game. That's top five in the nation, but their offense, the most efficient in the nation. On a points per possession basis, they lead the country. They score over 1.25 points points per possession. That's really impressive. All right, let's zero in a little bit. The Big 12 averaging over 20 points per game, and he gets them in a variety of ways. He is excellent in transition. He is fearless in attacking the basket. A catch-and-shoot type player out on the perimeter. If he gets his feet set, he's going to drill it. Shoots almost 50% from three, and also he plays on the defensive end almost two steals per game, and for Villanova, it all starts with Malik Wayans. He is really strong. He can get to the basket, very good off pick and rolls, and when he gets into the lane, he just bounces off people gets to the free throw line. I think Malik Wayans has got to score over 20 points. He's got to have a great game for Villanova to win. The starting lineups are being come out. Beginning with Missouri. A four-guard look. The Pressy brothers fill it out of the backcourt along with Marcus Denman and Kim English, who is shooting the ball at an unbelievable clip so far. Ricardo Ratliff, the lone true Wayans, their point guard, also Dominic Chief, James Bell, Javon Pinkston into the starting lineup. A bigger look for Villanova to we got to impose our will on them. Sorry. Our will. Okay? The, our quickness, our speed. We got to attack, attack, attack. I'll let you know we don't attack, but we attack. Selfless ball. Yep. That's what we've done. That's, what, that's the way we play on both ends of the court. Not just on the offensive end. We've also been selfless on the defensive end because we've given of ourselves. Okay? We've also been able to trust each other, which is important. Okay? When you help somebody, you know somebody's going to help you. That's all. That's what, it's, that's what we got to do on the defensive end and the offensive end. And at the end of the day, guys, we want to be 8-0. Yes, sir. Okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. As you saw, Villanova in white, Missouri in gold. And we are underway here in New York in game one of the Jimmy V doubleheader. B rebound, Phil Pressy. He's three of his last 19 threes. Denman will try it from the wing and knock it down. And Phil Pressy's such a good passer. He came down in a control. English will go. Pressy off to his brother, Matt Pressy, his big brother, the senior from Dallas, former junior college All-American. Pretty good job of rebounding as well. Nice look. Phil Pressy into Ratliff for the jam. It looked like every Villanova defender was looking out to the perimeter as if had a game like that with 11 assists. There's another feed inside. Ratliff again two games ago. Phil Pressy against Binghamton. 11 assists, no turnovers. Didn't even take a shot. And he's on to that kind of a start tonight here at the Garden. In the Jimmy V Classic game one, and it's been the Phil Pressy show so far. Well, anytime you help uphill as Mufiru did right there, you're going to give up a layup. And this is just simple pick and roll basketball. Yaru not up to step in situations, even if it's out of bounds side. And it winds up with a turnover. English ahead of the pack with the reverse layup. Boy, Kim English, for his career, he hadn't even shot 40% from the field, let alone three. Dixon from the baseline. Phil Pressy with yet another assist. He just creates so many problems for the defense with his ability to penetrate. Somebody with the quickness of Phil Pressy. Now what you have to do, Dan, is if he's going to penetrate, you've got you can't foul him and make him finish over you. Make him take a really tight. One of the things that makes Phil Pressy such a great guard to play with is he willingly gives up the ball and he's really disruptive as a defender. He's an assistant at Texas when T.J. Ford was there some years ago. First year in Columbia. Matt Pressy from the elbow. Comes down to Ratliff, and he'll muscle it up and in. Well, you had better be strong. It's with two fouls, and we saw how important he was early, picking up five assists. Nice find on the cut, and it stays down for Denman. See, Jay Wright can't have that. That was a well-executed play. Ratliff down for the rebound. Ratliff's so important to Missouri. 
Having to rebound consistently this year to set this up. Dixon finds Denman for three. And Jay Wright is going to use another timeout. English nearly lost it. Dixon comes up with it. Denman inside Ratliff. Boy, what a pass and what a catch and finish. I mean, Ratliff and it back come the Tigers. It was a good drive, just left the floor to her. English wide open. 57% from three point range on the season. Enter and by a senior who knows how to play, he knows how to get to the free throw line. And he a guy who nationally, Jay, probably does are all better here this season. And he's coming off a 31 point game against Northwestern State. He put in 26 on Notre Dame. To Villanova here for the game one. Matt Pressy at the line for the Tigers. You know, Dan, Missouri has not shot the ball well in this first assists on 10 of them. That's remarkable. And only two turnovers. Two turnovers. And you got a 5 to 1 assist turnover, 2 percentage. He's shooting over 90 his last three games. 22 for 24 his last three games. And on cue, Ratliff knocks in another one. He's 5 for 5 tonight. So let's. 27 for 29. I'm telling my guards, will you give him the ball? <laughs> Denman for three. You said it. Danger time for Villanova here near the end of the first half. Three point range on the season. Ratliff has a mismatch down there. Good pass. Dixon sees it. Ratliff lays it in, but has not yet gotten up. Seven seconds. Dixon keeps going. Followed by Denman with a second to go in the half. He just makes big play after big play. Always in the right spot. Well, you make. Dixon take a tough shot instead of grabbing the off or the defensive rebound. Marcus Denman, nobody blocks him out. He just finds a way. Marcus Denman with 15 points in the first half, and Missouri's lead is 13 at halftime here for the game one. Marcus Denman, a little Iverson cut over the top. And Denman another three. He's got 18 points, including four three-pointers already tonight. One of the few times that Missouri didn't have pressure on the ball, and you could see in. Great pass. Pressy, a beautiful look off to Denman. Denman's got 20 points, and Pressy's got seven as a three. But now left wide open on the wing is Denman, and Chief was pointing out to him like, somebody get him, somebody get him. And nobody picked up Denman, who's the last one. With the awareness now, Jay, as you talked about, racing back all five of them on D. English, though, left open beyond the arc. That's the thing, they run back into that 2-3 zone. Everybody had their spot. Like he's taking the pressure off of himself because he's playing such good defense. He's rebounding. Matt Cressy, wide open. Kim English has taken 10 charges this year. The name only. That's because of the loss of Bowers. Everybody's had to play. A bigger spot. Dixon for three. Kingston was out on him, trying to give him a little bit of space. Ratliff the rebound. Good pass. And another one. And Denman, a three. Well, he doesn't just get it to Marcus Denman. He gets it to him right in his shooting pocket. Not even an adjustment had to be made with that ball by Marcus Denman before it was up. 26 points, Jay. They're sharing the ball beautifully again. Well, they call this the extra pass, but it was perfect. Right in the shooting pocket, and Baines on the drive. And Hingston thought better of it that time. And winds up with an assist on the three by Chief. Villanova's right back in it. Kubu fighting around the screen. Dixon shovels it into Ratliff. Well, he spread the floor of that zone, playing in a tandem out front. And Phil Pressy knocks it away. And will jam it. Timeout Villanova. game coming out to set the on ball screen a little run out ball screen and immediately rolls right to the rim a rim run and Malik Waynes has to come down try to stop it he has no chance with the nice catch and finish and just active hands here jumping to the ball getting his right hand in the passing lane and knock I didn't know he could do that that's pretty that's pretty impressive <laughs>
You know, Jim Falvano used to have in this spot in the game. They don't know how hard this is. English knows how hard it is. He's a senior. Senior out of and the I think the hardest defense to play is one on one in the post. So he can get angles and he's got a lot of good passers around him. Even though it's a zone and it opens up the offensive glass even if you miss. Pressy. Ratliff, how pretty is that? Just the drive draws the defender, Yaru, for the shot block, and that opens every Denman. 15 footer is good. That'll be assist number 11. He dishing the ball, and when he drives it off this little pick and roll, when Yaru comes over to block the shot, no wonder Ratliff is shooting such a high percentage. <laughs> Yet another terrific catch and finish makes it look easy thanks to Phil Pressey. Great inside outside combination for the Tigers tonight, Jay, with Ratliff and Denman. Well, Ratliff and Denman have combined for 45 points thus far, 18 of 24 from the field. Ratliff has 17 points and 11 rebounds, 8 of 8. And Marcus Denman has 28 points. You can see Pressey passing ahead for his one of his double figure assist totals. One of the Jimmy V Classic from New York, Dan Schulman and Jay Billis, Missouri, and Villanova as Kim English knocks down another three to up the lead to 12. Phil Pressey just picked up his 12th assist. Marcus, or you're impressed with the way he controls a game without shooting. Little guy, big heart. Three games, but you could make a case that even with the big nights, Denman and Ratliff have had that Pressy has been the single most influential player. I don't look at this roster like in years past where you see a bunch of potential pros, but he's got a team that's going to scrap and fight. And it blew out Notre Dame at a cow to win the CBE Classic. And you can see when you watch them, you know, they know it's their last go round, and they've got a coach that believes in them, that they believe in, even though they're playing a little bit of a different way than they did last play, caught everything around them play as well as they're capable in the first half, but in the second half, they came out strong. Tiger fans on their feet. Missouri goes to 8-0 no, with a 10-point win over Villanova. Jay, a pleasure. Take the rest of the night off. Pleasure's been mine. Go watch some basketball. I can't wait to watch you guys. Well, I'll tell you, Missouri's a good basketball team. This team's going to beat a lot of people. We'll have the second game between Washington and Marquette about 25 minutes from now. Welcome to St. Louis and a great border rivalry that's become a holiday tradition. The Missouri Tigers are one of college basketball's remaining undefeateds, putting up numbers that defy belief and scream dominance. Illinois has historically had the upper hand in this series, but it will take a great performance to secure victory tonight. Effort and atmosphere won't be a problem. After all, it's for bragging rights. Welcome to ESPN's coverage of Bud Light Dragon Rights, part of Holiday Hoops presented by K Jewelers from the Scott Trade Center in St. Louis. It's number 20. The thing that we talk about is the difference in the, their scoring as opposed to opponent scoring, the margin that they have. Now here we're going to see Missouri bring the ball down. They look a little bit. They position themselves, get some spacing, willing to get it back out or go in with it. Really nice move there in the post. This time, they're going to go inside with it again. They rebound really well. Good position on the board. Throw it back out. Now they're going to utilize the three. Before, I always thought maybe they shot the three a little bit too quickly, but it's just a different, I think. Comes in a couple of blocks. He's joined by Griffey, Paul Richardson, and Maniscalco. Although Bruce Weber says that it'll likely go small to face Missouri's small lineup presented by Bud Light with the Pressey brothers, English and Denman. English at 6'6". Ratliff is the center. He is a perfective basketball player, but Ratliff is extremely quick and aggressive inside. He's going to be a handful to handle in the coach. Missouri's one. No, Ratliff missed that. That's an indication of how difficult he's going to be to play against the movement that he makes inside. Brandon Paul with a three-point shot, but Illinois doesn't get back. And Ratliff with an easy bucket for Missouri. Now that's the thing that Missouri. You know, a lot of people, when Frank Haight was hired as the Missouri coach to replace Mike Anderson, they questioned the move because of his lack of success. Just one NCAA trip at Bruce Weber in his ninth season. Third active coach in the Big Ten to get to 200 victories, joining Tom Izzo. 
Can't stick it back in, but Griffey working hard. And the swap by Moore. Here's Pressy racing down court. Able to get past Abrams to the bucket. As we really great help, great defensive play there. And Pressy gives it up. English with the finger roll. Well, that's the first time that Missouri was. Missouri out in transition. Here's Denman spotting up. Hits a three. Less than five minutes action. Here, here we see some pretty good defense that leads to three baskets. And these were the first two situations that Missouri got help when the ball was in the post. And there's a third one. And now they're going to come down. They get good spread, good timing with the three. So we've got seven points. Has almost got to get in the exact path of the driver because if he gets at him from sideways, you're going to see foot fake, and he went with it, and that put him in a bad position. Dixon gets the already has a couple blocks in this game, and now Denman spotting up for a second three. All nothing Missouri run. Pressy right back down court gets the bounce. How hard is it, coach? Here comes Pressy, finds English, and English will try a three, and he buries the triple. Well, they've done about as much offensively as a team could do. Uh, like this three-point shot from English. Really good move to get the ball back to English, and English was perfectly set up for the shot. He fought it. He could take to set up that shot. They helped stay with him. He would not have gotten that bucket. And Pressy with another short jumper. He's got six points for Missouri. Leonard made an excellent pass there. He knew where his teammate was. He put it on the floor, brought the defense to him. I'd still like to see Leonard stay in that low post all the time. He's not going to add anything to their offense. That Missouri was set up in some kind of a zone against it, and, and uh, Illinois took great advantage of the holding. And they give up a three. And Moore took a shot to the face. He's given Missouri some valuable minutes off the bench. As Michael Dixon buries a three. See, Illinois just totally went to position where the only way to the bucket was right through. Him. Look at him there. Big 32 just holds, draws the, draws the uh, foul on the charge. Uh, just a good turn and come up and take the shot. And when, when that doesn't happen, then you're going to foul the guy like that. Illinois had a defensive play. They gave Missouri two points. Dixon with the second free throw. Do you think adding the restricted area to the... This shows that the baseline is tough to play against. Here's Moore with the jumper. Steve Moore dropped about 20 pounds in the offseason. Missouri's defense gets the ball. Uh, the defense of whomever they're playing, obviously in this case, Illinois. Dixon is the only player tonight to attempt a free throw. He is now 6 of 6, but nobody else on either team is even. The 7th free throw attempt of the game. That's the 17 foul on Illinois. It's on Richardson, his first person. Missouri in the bonus. Michael Dixon coming off a 30-point game. A career high has 11 here in the first half tonight to lead. Moore didn't cover the drive as well as he should have. There's a wide open shot. Pressing taking it to the bucket. Nobody rotated, and he gets the layup to push soon go out on the other side of Idaloo and pheasant hunt. <laughs> There's the layup by Phil Pressey where you're talking about something to happen that gives Illinois another chance to score. Even if Missouri doesn't score, they just don't want to give it up. Pressey can't get it to go, but his brother Matt is there for the stop. What an end to the first half for Missouri. 11-point lead for the Tigers is their largest tonight. Thanks to 15 fast break points, and they haven't given up any on defense. Bill Pressey unable to convert, but his older brother Matt flying in there for the follow. Now Jonathan Coachman, Jay Williams, the K Jewelers Halftime Report.
Welcome back to ESPN's cover. Illinois, they've got to get down inside more often because they're big enough, their bodies are wide enough that they're going to get some baskets, as we're going to see right here. Uh, they get it blocked. Uh, that's more at that end, but still, he's big enough. Uh, Leonard is, Griffey is. Of eight at the foul line in that first half, and now 48 of 50 on the year at the strike. Three pointer goes for Matt Pressy. He ended the first half with a dunk and now a three point. And Matt Pressy at the free throw line. What, what's the biggest thing in terms of? Come back with a left hand, a little left hand hook inside. A little fake to the right, come back with the right hand hook inside. Defend Second half, the Illini with just one loss in the year. That was against UNLV. Lost by 16 in that game as Ratliff steps inside and gets the bucket. Ratliff got the ball to start the drive uh, before Desmond did. Leonard should have had one more free throw for Denman. As Missouri is now 12 of 12 as a team. That was a pretty good look by Bill Pressey. It was the fouling from behind. He's just having a tremendous run right now. Six to one assist to turnover ratio. The teams you've seen in person or on TV. Where do you put Missouri right now? Well, I think Missouri is the best team I've seen play, and I think they play the best of any team that I've seen play to this point. And I think lost in the second round of the NCAA tournament. Dixon with a beautiful move, able to scoop it in with the left. Because they can shoot the ball, they don't have to get all the way to the bucket, and they're very clever. Illinois has got to do a better job. It never fails, David. It <laughs> never fails, and, and particularly when you're sitting on the bench. And we clean it. So that's what Leonard has to give that team. Pressy with a three-point opportunity. Maniscalco picking up the foul. That was a great look. Boy, again, I, I really, really marvel at the ability of those four kids that we mentioned uh, with Missouri, Dave, do in full court offense. They're, they all can hit the shot. They all can drive. They look for open people. Uh, Gets the second one. Back to a 10-point. Quick with it. And now Pressy with the teardrop, and Ratliff with the putback. Use the arm in a downward motion and commit the foul. Leonard from way out, able to hit. It's a five-point game. Oh, looking to cut the lead to three, maybe two. Here's Bertrand on the drive. Beautiful finish. <laughs> 15 points now for Birch. Offense, it's going too fast. It's it's taking shots too quickly. How about Bertrand again? He's got Illinois within one. He's perfect from the... Going to have to double team that one of the great assets is going to be his ability to go to the free throw line with uh, help on him. Illinois leads for the first time since the 16 minute. Gets a block on defense, Leonard does, but it's kept alive by Moore. And now Pressy with the floater. That ends a run of 21 to 6 in favor of Illinois. Missouri back on top. And have the angle, and now Paul on the drive. Shot clock at 6. Paul over 2. Missouri Tigers puts it in. Much greater patience on the offensive end this half than Missouri has had. Nixon buries a three. Missouri by two. Dip. Drive the ball. Here's Paul with a pull up three, and he gets it to go. And Illinois is back on top. Again, they're late in the shot clock, which is rare, and Pressy will take it in behind the back to Ratliff. Got the shot off, beat the buzzer, and banked it in. Now that was a shot. Just what happened here. He's an 84% free throw shooter. It's the second time the night he's been fouled shooting a three. He gets both on this trip and one more. Will be the most important single play in the game as far as Illinois and Missouri are concerned. He got all three, and Illinois leads by two with two to play. 
and margin of victory. Their smallest win was by 10 points against Nova. As Radliff gets the handle and scores, he lost it for a moment, regained it, and put it in to tie it at 70. Boy, that was a quick. 17 points for Illinois. They go to Leonard, bad pass, and a turnover by the Illini. Here's English. Bertrand will challenge. English scores. And a foul, a three-point opportunity for Kim English. All right, here we're going to see the bucket. Ratliff has great hands here coming up with the ball. He didn't lose sight of the ball. He stayed right with it. And then here's a really, really quick move and a great athletic play going to the bucket. He scored because of uh, Illinois mistakes. Illinois has scored some points here because of Missouri mistakes, and that's why including this one. Here's Paul, picked up by Presley, and he throws it away. That's the first big mistake that Illinois... Tigers 11-0. Denman off the screen. He'll drive it on Leonard. Can't finish. Neither does Radliff, but he got it back. That time he got it to go. And an Illinois foul. play that Ratliff has made uh, here in the last minute of play. Good defense, could have been a foul. Ratliff follows it, he doesn't give up on it. He goes up through a foul to make the bucket. Oh. Down and get a shot off. They have to now. Timers at five, pressing on the drive. Able to score. They had to shut that off. Illinois had to drop in and make it impossible for Missouri to get to the bucket. That's not gonna go. Misses the three, Leonard the rebound. Bucket by Bertrand, and now a timeout by Illinois. It's a one possession game, but Missouri has the ball. It's the final timeout taken. Well, they didn't really get good pressure out here. Like you called it really well that they allowed them to do that. And then once the drive started, they had to collect everybody on the lane and make. It is a one and one, so if he misses here again, Illinois without a timeout. Dixon hit it, though, yeah. and it's a four-point game. I, I was going to suggest that they can't get a shot off here. And surprise, Ratliff even challenged that. I risked the foul at that point. Game over, Missouri wins 12-0, best start in 30 years. As the Tigers blow a 14-point lead, but come back in the final minute, being down two, and win it by four. Well, you know, we saw uh, we saw a different Missouri team in the second half. In the last three minutes of the second half, they came back to play like they had in the first half. And I think had they not been able to turn that around. ESPN 2, it's East 60 for Bob Knight and our entire crew. I'm Dave Pash. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. So long from St. Louis, where Missouri beats Illinois by four. Constant Convocation Center in Norfolk, Virginia, a premier mid-major venue and a major non-conference test for the number eight Missouri Tigers, Jones, Jeff Clark, and Pat Driscoll. The opening tip goes out of bounds. English on the wing inside to Denman. Ball's blocked by Wright, and Ratliff puts it back, leading the nation in field goal. See her flip as he's known to his teammates. Ratliff underneath again with the left hand. You look at OD. And speaking of three, number three, Matt Bressy from Missouri. Dixon, Michael Dixon checks into the game. He's the sixth man, but he started most of the same. They're one of the best in the country at doing just this. The steal, the transition dunk off the miss. And ODU comes up empty on the offensive end. Here's Denman all alone for the lane. And what you're saying right here, Old Dominion wants to keep this game. To a terrific situation at Missouri, and I don't think anybody, Haith himself included, could have expected this type of start of the season. Coach's dream. Look at that. That's impressive. Speaks for itself. 87 points, 52 percent from the field. What a confident young man he is, despite the fact that he grew up with a stuttering problem. Overcame that Love problem, it. and has really helped him become. Moore knocks down the first for his tribute. 
he's been a pleasant addition to this rotation. Come on, Rich. You look down at the end of the pitch and say, who's the big guy I got? Layup off the mark. The follow goes. Pressy, foul line, good. Flip Pressy's first two of the game puts the Missouri. You might notice the bonus underneath the score for Missouri. That means they are in the bonus. Every foul from here on out will send them to the free throw line. Pressy good on the first. And rattles home the second. Now let's see if Missouri tries to see the ball going side to side. This is their tenth pass. English for three. On the floor, 5'10", 175 pounds. One for two from the free throw line. The teammates, so they play off of each other very well. Matt Pressy feeds to Rutliff with the two-hand slam. Missouri comes away with it. They have numbers. English floats in for two. For Old Dominion, they did everything. Matchup right here. He's going to need some help. It's a blow by and one. That was going to get him off that matchup. Make him make a pass because now he's picked up a foul that he shouldn't. Have. Talk about college basketball being 40 minutes. It's 0 for 3. Make it 1 for 4. As a team, they're. Iliadis. Hill fires it up. Off the mark, no foul called, and we'll go to halftime with Old Dominion trying to stun the undefeated number eight ranked Missouri Tigers. They lead at 35-33. Missouri has never trailed at the half in there. You look at Old Dominion, Kent Bazemore has been the guy offensively. He's left-handed, he's able to go to his right, elevate on the first time and shooting over. Nobody's blocking his shot. And then this is a big guy's dream when he can get in position and Chris Cooper can get that extra pass for easy layup. Now for Missouri, they're gonna attack. They didn't shoot the three-point shot well the first half, but Ricardo Ratliff coming back home. He's from the Hampton Roads area. It's been dynamite for him down low. Ratliff with seven points. Phil Pressy has eight points, but Marcus Dennis. Nick Wright finished well above the rim on that play. Deadman looking to get on track, and he does that there. And you can see him shaking his head. Unfortunate for ODU. Missouri could tie or take the lead. Denman goes for the ladder and hits it. Hill. Look out. He's officially on fire. And guess who with the rebound? Marcus Denman. English for three. Blaine Taylor's thinking about calling the timeout right now. Got to get control of this game. You don't want this lead to spread. Then the runners are getting out. Flip Pressley. They get it up there. And the shot already within five seconds. You've got a three-point bomb. In fact, I was thinking about it now. But they've done a good job in the half-court set of contesting, of challenging the three-point shot. English feeling it. And for good reason. Denman. Two balanced shots, they're not contested. <laughs> Smallest player on the floor rises. Bill Pressy Duncan in an amateur game. This one's big time in D1. Missouri up not, is not, how are they scoring? Because we could see they're scoring by the three, but how are they getting so open? Well, they hold no dominion to one shot, and then they're racing down, getting to their shooting pockets. You're seeing uncontested three-point shots, and you'll take that all day long. First half, shot 16% from the three-point line. Dixon up ahead, but Denman missed it. Instead to English, with a little English off the window. On defense. Cutting off the drive of Denman. And then Kim English with the hang time. Excellent finish.
earlier today at shoot around was his team is finally rounding out into form where he can go nine deep and he has tonight they've had 10 different players on this roster Frank Hayes trying to keep his guys fresh too. You're seeing English going out. You're seeing the Presley brothers come in and out. He's trying to keep his guys fresh for the last five. Here's a steal by Iliadis. <laughs> Dixon short armed it, and Ratliff is there with the foul. Double digits for Ricardo Ratliff in his return to the basketball, able to get his teammates open looks. Baseball! Missouri's offense is stagnant, too much standing around. Dixon with the drive, the hoop, and the foul. Clutch play by Michael Dixon. This would be the biggest win at home for ODU in their history. Dixon converts the three-point play. Get it back outside. You don't like it right there. Cooper, turn around. And one! Being in the zone, trying to spot up on the shooters. Inside, nice look. Pressy to Ratliff. What an answer from the Tigers. Well, you're going to give up something. Blaine Taylor doesn't want to get beat with the three-point shot, but you've got an excellent pass right there, threading the needle, and Ratliff, how about his hands? Boy, if he doesn't play basketball the next time. Baysmore almost lost it, kept it, and goes off the window. Team high 15 for Baysmore. Ratliff again. Last one with the basketball is going to win this one. Take them out of what they want to do offensively. Baysmore, the floater, no good. Missouri, a team high and a season high, 13 turnovers. Denman, the dead eye three pointer. And Baysmore looks like he's got a crook. Really out his trips. Cooper, and they call him for steps. The traveling violation on Chris. Denman knocks down the first. Calmly knocks both of those down for a game high 19. Got to go quickly. Almost stolen by Denman. Uh, the poise, the cool, the calmness of him. Kim English at a key point in time pulled his teammates together. Talk to Phil. His poise. Up until that free throw, they had scored the last eight points of this game. There's Pressy all alone for two. 15 points for Phil Pressy. Well, Missouri earned it, but Old Dominion can be very proud of themselves and have momentum going into the conference. The Tigers were not tamed. Missouri comes away with a hard-fought win, 75-68, to remain one of the four unbeaten teams in Division I college basketball. 13-0 are the Missouri Tigers going into Big 12 play against Oklahoma on January 3rd. And who do you think Missouri is going to have their toughest contest against? The Dominion wanted this one, but they represented themselves extremely well. Their All-American came up big when they... 12 starts to heat up. The Tigers' Marcus Denman is one of the top scorers in the country. But the Longhorns counter with Jerry Showcase, presented by 5 Hour Energy. It's Big 12 Conference action as the Texas Longhorns face four starters when Mike Anderson left for Arkansas. But to his credit, he pushed them out to a quick start. They went 14 0 before finally taking a loss. English deep in the backcourt. And here comes the Missouri one. Their only loss to Kansas State. Here's Denman right out of the game with a three, his first touch. Yeah, you see how quick that is and out of each and every club. Pressy to push it. The dish almost mishandled, but somehow English came up with it. Handley shooting over 70%. And knocks it down. Mizzou leading by Missouri, but the shot clock down to six. Backlift dishes to Pressy. Shot clock at three. He'll fire it and hit a three. Shot clock running down and a six foot seven guy in his face. He's stunned like his daddy. Despite their small size. 
And on cue, it's Denman at the line, one of the great scorers in America. He's got that experience, the size. He's playing with a, a tremendous amount of confidence. And it was a simple. That's a good offensive possession that time. Denman, they found it for the three, and he drains it. And he can score. Here's Denman on the other end, and all nets. This one, number four, Baylor, facing number 10, Kansas, all on Monday. A valuable player. My man, Stephen Bardo, can't wait to talk with David <laughs> Freeze. He's been a Cardinal fan for years and years. Boy, that was a World Series performance. Un the one, two, and a fastball hit to right field. Going back is Cruz, and it is off the wall. It bounces back toward the infield. Pujols scores. Berkman scores. Freeze in the third. It's tied. 3 2, a swing and a high fly ball. Center field. It is gone. And Bedlam there at Bush Stadium, the man responsible for that. Game six, heroics. David Freeze, the World Series most valuable player. Joining us here at Courtside, David, a thrill to have you. Thank Congrats you. on an amazing performance in the World Series. This guy is a huge Cardinal fan, <laughs> so he's been dying to say hello to you. When has it sunk in? When did it sink in that that happened, one of the great World Series performances ever? Uh, I think the parade. I think that's what it was all about um, when I finally realized uh, that we did something crazy. And, um, you know, you show up downtown and get ready for that parade and, and come out in those trucks and thousands of people are, uh, you know, streaming in. It's pretty cool. Is there any better feeling on the face of the earth than making the contact you did on a game-winning home run? And you look down, you knew immediately you got it all. <laughs> I don't know if I knew I got it. Well, you've won uh, game six of the World Series. <laughs> but, uh, no, it was it was cool. You know, you uh, you know we always talk about it, but um, it, it's nice to get a, get a chance after you take one off the head on that pop-up and, yeah, yeah. and you get to turn things around a little bit, so I'm fortunate for that. Missouri on top here, 18 to 14. Missouri very close to your heart. I know you were pumped about seeing him today. Yeah, absolutely. I got a got a chance to finally meet Kim um, before the game. You know, obviously a great great guy and a, and a great basketball player. So you know, these guys are fun to watch. Tip won't go. And Coach Ratliff hit drop in two, working hard as he comes off the bench. And this is the World Series so much, but just having a chance to do it in your hometown and kind of coming through um, and doing your part. But it, it's uh, it's flattering. It's humbling. Um, you know, coming to Mizzou, and you know, I came to the Mizzou Texas football game um, earlier this year, and you know, I get to come to this game. Um. The world champions, especially given everything you did to secure that title for the St. Louis Cardinals, is English with a long distance three. This team just shooting the lights out. That has to be the greatest feeling in the world. You're not really rolling. Smooth, <laughs> right? <laughs> Quick elevation. That's how you yeah, that's how you used to shoot it back in high school, right? <laughs> I'll say that if I'm lying. <laughs> <laughs> Only five no to chance. shoot. Check this. These freshmen are finding out how tough it is on these road games in the Big 12 Conference. Rattlev underneath. Got position. He was not to be denied. And it's the biggest lead so far for the Tigers. They're in a 14 to 2 run. Ever since David Freeze sat down. <laughs> yeah, right. They're not gonna let you out of this arena, David. That's fine. Another turnover. Gibbs could not advance at 9. 12 to go and a frustrated Rick Barnes out with that rotator cuff. He's been wearing that support there ever since. Finds it very, very difficult to sleep. Has been up. That won't drop. Battle for the rebound. Comes right to Moore. No foul there, but he got him off. Great pass down to Ratlin for two more. 30 to 16 Missouri at the same time and so they're two bigs working the glass relentless pursuit of the basketball I mean who cares when you're when you're getting sized for World Series rings <laughs> then, oh man is he cooking Marcus Denman with another three as 14 in the first half Four. David Freeze the St. Louis Cardinals he's floating on air oh quick move inside by Moore to drop in a bucket away with 14 in the paint spins to give off a Ratliff green and roll understanding that he can get in the paint watch him spin Ricardo Ratliff knows to go to the rim excellent two-man execution by the Tigers so English the senior from Baltimore will go to the line. 23 against Oklahoma State 
He can be very dangerous. Duke and Clemson, but Kim English is the epitome of student athlete. That will not game, and that was to Kansas State. Here's Pressy. Yes, another three, and they're eight out of on the uh, nice pass underneath Ratliff. A great dish there by. And he's gotten hot from three. And so what that does is it allows him to be even more aggressive off the bounce. So we've seen him earlier get into the paint area and dish down to Rattler for some for an easy do. So the three-point shoot. Chance to get a heave off round around midcourt. That's the end of the first half, but Missouri celebrating as they head off to the locker room, a 13-point lead. Denman was the key, as he often is for the Tigers. He had 14. Rattler. Guys get in space, or are they just hot? Well, most of the threes we got were in transition, and we got out and ran in, in, in early offense. And our half-court offense, we still need more movement, but I was pleased when we were able to get out and transition and make some plays. You know what Rick Barnes can do at halftime. What are your biggest priorities going into the second? Well, they're going to bring it. I mean, they're defensively, they're going to pick it up, and they're I'm a little concerned about us rebounding the ball. They're keep, they're crashing big on us on the boards. We got to do a great job blocking out. All right, I'll let you get in there. Thanks, coach. Guys. Texas has out rebounded Missouri 18 to 14, but every other statistic is in Missouri's favor. They lead by 13 at the break as we go to Steve Bunin in the studio for our halftime report. Steve Tigers, they are a quick strike offense. They like that first shot. They take it. There's Pressy on cue. Body in. Drew the contact and then was able to get the ball on the glass. Biggest. I'm sure that uh, Rick Barnes had the goaltending. Count that basket. Chapman got up there. Without him, Texas would have been dead and buried already in this one. Pressy way downtown for three. They are now nine. He receives two screens. He can turn the corner. Look at that. He's been perfect. Rattling with another make. He Texas, I thought that was a little quick shot by Lewis. Well run play there and the stuff by Ratliff. The sense so he, he's got experience that he can rely upon and these guys can finish games very strong. A tough move by English in the lane. And their shot selection, they've hit just 45% for the season. Another corner jumper by English. Rebound speared by Pressy. Here he comes, one man fast break. He gets fouled and he makes the shot. He'll go to the line for a three point play. And you see now it's starting to tighten up on them. And if you don't have full speed and full strength. Pressy hits 77% and a three point play. Back up to 10. This plays into the hands of Texas. Pressy lifts. Yes. A little light there from three point land. This young man, is, he's got the lineage from his father who was thought of as the original. And Pressy. It's that one as well, 67-57. So they're able to get it back. Another freshman into the backcourt. Now here's Pressy. He elevates. Seven. Pressy, that nice little flip over the shoulder to Moore. He has that move down. Who's making this team go is Flip Pressy, Big 12's steals leader and assist leader. Showing he's also got high. Esther, who is now an assistant for Frank Kate. Ernie told him that Frank was an up and comer, a young guy that would be great on their success. How nice is that? Very nice indeed. Holmes with the foul to put English at the line. These two coaches met once before. 72. And English makes the pair 73 to 60. Right, so they need to ride him the rest of the way. 29. Oh, rising up Denman. He had been so much pressure on the Texas defense. That Texas is, is celebrating when they score, but they're not getting back defensively. Denman is a great foul shooter. Number two. What an amazing combination of a guy. That money from the line can shoot the three as well as he can. And 43% from three. Is as aggressive as he is going to the rim. Leading the Big 12 in scoring at 18 points a game. A team that's one of the harder teams in the country to match up against, and they haven't stopped the attack. Well, that's a very nicely run play to bounce for Ratliff in two points. We could see Frank Haith. Flip has done it all. Come off, shot threes. Then he's pushing the basketball, dishing and finding his own shot at the rim. They go under the screen, he makes them pay. They go over the screen. He, he makes them pay and then shoots the gap. Does as well in terms of steals as any player. 
finds his brother Matt. Now Pressy with a misfire. Denman gets the rebound. Flip pass to Ratliff. Two more. Nice day for him. He has Pittsburgh Syracuse game at the beginning of the season. Looked like it would be a premier one. Jamie Dixon's ball club is really as the number one team in the nation. Highly ranked when the season started. Dixon shooting two. And he, Coach Haith not going to make too much of a big deal about it with the point spread. And the 18 points for him, 21 for Ratliff, 18 for Bill Pressey. That will count at the buzzer. But that's your final score. Missouri wins it pretty comfortably in the end. 84 to 73. Frank Haith and company down an impressive 16 and 1. Right, they are fun to watch. Share the basketball, old school basketball, Big 12. Watch out. Coming up next on ESPN2, the Saturday Showcase presented by 5-Hour Energy continues. It'll be Oklahoma State facing number four, Baylor. This has been a presentation of on this very special day as we honor the memory of Dr. Martin Luther King. 16-1 and one in rank. Bill will be our lead referee here. Simmons and Kessinger working alongside. And Mizzou, quick five-point lead. Hate's going to go to his bench early. Bill Pressey drives for the hoop. Well, that's just what they really have to be careful of, Missouri. Feed inside by Pressey and Ricardo. And you wonder, as you look at these two teams, of course, both are headed for the Southeastern Count on the Missouri roster, and you wonder if they move to the south and to the east, if they're going to have to move their recruiting base out of Kansas City campus basketball facilities in the country. Seats right over. There's a three knocked down now and an answer by Tim English. The ball. Uh, feel that uh, in the long run they're not going to really be able to play 40 minutes with Texas A&M. But they can't be. Point is a big factor. You know, it's eight more uh, points possible for A&M than Missouri. Down. Middleton has stayed on the floor, and a great drive by Pressey and score it. Dixon, the three ball, and Missouri has tied it at the 720 mark. To give Missouri a lead is Ratliff, and he knocks it down. Free throws. A big You've had a chance to shoot a lot of free throws, and Ratliff, as you've indicated, is a very good free throw shooter. And I think that's been missing the three ball, but an offensive rebound by Pressy and Dixon guns the tray. Now the the tenth free throw for Missouri. Six opportunities uh, worth anywhere from 12 to 18 points, depending upon the shot or the free throw. Oh. Off the cut, Denman, beautiful offensive rebound, drove past the man and put it. Air ball, and at the other end, Dixon, after his defensive mistake, has contributed with it. Going to make AM anxious. They're going to look, maybe draw a foul here. Quick drive. They get open. Go. Marcus Denver. I think Missouri Brent has the best combination of. Underneath. Right, we take a look at the Missouri guards. There's really good defensive play by English. They take the ball to the bucket. They rebound it inside. Here they take it to the bucket. Throw it back out to the trailer. Three-point shot. When they've got three guards in there out of the four they have, they can even play with They've got to find some shooters. Down by Dixon, he's going to come again. He feels it. Oh, baby. That was a great cross. Here's that cross court pass and a tremendous break catch going out of bounds that leads to the three. I'm sure you can still hit the ball now. Here comes Dixon again, boys. Going for it. Lay it in there. Like that. It's 16 by for Dixon. The from you and Coach Chain. Nah, coming off a of football <laughs> season. I think that's pretty good. Battle's out. That'll do it, Bob. It was a, it was a first by Missouri. They trailed 17-14. They went on a 28-6 run and allowed only two field goals in the last.
Back in 2012, the Tigers traveled to Waco, Texas for a top five matchup with Baylor. Early on, Mizzou showed how hot shooting helped elevate them to the number five ranking against the third ranked Bears. A jump shot good by Kim English, who is, like many of his teammates, shooting a sizzling percentage from the field this year. Denman from downtown, and Marcus Denman knocks down the long ball. Matt Pressey's now working through the middle of the zone. And on the shot clock, and Matt Pressey, who's a 35% three-point shooter, knocks down the long one. But you'll likely recall one of the biggest reasons for Mizzou's run to 30 wins in 2012 was the amazingly efficient inside play from Ricardo Ratliff. And Ratliff had himself a day in Waco. Watch how quickly the ball leaves his hands. There's the jump quick before Perry Jones can get up off the floor. Locked in a tight game with Baylor, the Pressey brothers went back to back from the outside. First Matt tying the game, and then Phil putting Mizzou on top. And not just with his shooting, Phil Pressey, Ratliff, and one! Where does it stop? Oh, baseline to baseline. There's Pressey on the drive. Nice speed. How did he make that pass? Dropping dimes like a bank teller. Pressey gives Missouri a four-point lead courtesy of that nice speed to Ratliff inside. Heslip and Jackson really guard the top of the key as well as they can. Boy, Phil Pressey with a stare down three over Heslip. Baylor took the lead on the three-pointer that put them up by one, capping a 13-0 run by the Bears, and the two top five teams seesawed back and forth. English flashes to the foul line, and Cooley knocks it down. Now look at Matt Pressey all over Quincy Miller. Miller gets his own rebound and got the second one to fall. Behind the zone, he can also stretch it from out top. Ratliff got rid of it and won another quick shot, as you pointed out earlier, Fred. Take a look at this right here, Mark. Wow. That ball was barely in his hands. Mizzou began to take control. Rebounded, and the Tigers off to the races. And take a look, Matt Pressey sneaks behind the defense and locks his use of the window with the reverse. And right now, Matt Pressey putting pressure on that bare defense from downtown. Pressey, nice dime inside to Ratliff for the slam. It was a career day for Ricardo Ratliff as he scored 27 points on 11 for 14 shooting and added eight rebounds. The Tigers continued to lead thanks in large part to a 55% shooting day from the field. Denman breaks down the defense and gets all the way to the cup. Back out to a wide open English, shooting 51% on the season, knocks down the long one. The Tigers hit 10 free throws in the final minute, holding off Baylor and picking up a top five win on the road. Texas had lost their last three home games to top 10 teams. Michael Dixon Jr., a force off the bench. Hits the three. Then a mid-range jumper over the defender, and then another jumper from outside for Dixon Jr. He was 9 of 10 from the field, and the Tigers have a 12-point lead. Later in the second half, Mizzou's lead is down to two. Phil Pressey scooped to the hoop. Now, just over a minute to go. Check out what happens here. Dixon Jr. knocking down Julian Lewis and is called for a flagrant foul for intentionally using his elbow. So. Lewis gets two free throws, which he made, plus Texas gets the ball back. Jacobin Brown, he had 20 for Texas. That's a four-point turnaround for the Horns, and they have a one-point lead. But Dixon Jr. comes back. 20 points to lead Missouri. Remember, all off the bench, the Tigers have a one-point lead. Last chance for Texas. Mike Cabongo. We were watching this on set with Jalen, and he thought Texas' execution in the final possession very poor. As Missouri holds on to beat Texas. A feud between Missouri and Kansas, and this crowd in Missouri Arena wants one final piece of the reviled Jayhawks tonight. Kansas and Missouri in primetime college game day in Columbia for the first time. Welcome inside an already frenzied Missouri Arena. <laughs>
something like some pyrotechnics and a little dry eye, some CO2 and smoke to inflame an already explosive rivalry. The nerves are frayed, fuses are short, relationships icy between Missouri and Kansas. They're not only battling for the Big 12 championship, there is a feeling in this building that the people might be witnessing a slice of history. This is the last scheduled visit by the Jayhawks to Columbia, a rivalry that has been going on for more than 100 years. It's just the third time that these two teams have met as top 10 opponents. Missouri 2-0 in those games. Trying to make it 3-0 tonight, but it's a rivalry that Kansas has dominated now. Wow. Missouri going to the SEC next year. Both of these teams have a chance to win the Big 12. Both of these teams can get to a Final Four and win a national championship. This is not just a regular game. This is a huge game for both programs. Yeah, I agree with you. The emotional of the rivalry, or if Missouri goes, you know, they're going to the SEC. And when you look at everything with Kansas and Missouri, it still comes down to they both know this is a big game. Kansas playing on the road, Missouri at home, not wanting to lose to Kansas at home, but more importantly, how do we get better so that when we get time for the Big 12 Conference Tournament and get take care of business there, we're playing for number one seed in the NSA Tournament tonight. That's what this game means. Well, first, I, I know that entrance was a little bit different for all of you guys. That's what happens when I leave the house every morning, <laughs> including the same amount of people that are there to greet me. Uh, this year's different, I think, in this rivalry because I think Missouri's got a special team. They they've been good before, but this is a special team. And I think that's going to give this a little bit of a different feel uh, when they tip off tonight. You know, the one thing things to say, you, you clued him in on all the hip-hop talk. This rivalry, if you understand the intensity of it, back in 1961, there was some bitter feelings left over from the football game. They got into a fight. Missouri won the game by three. Hey, look, even the fans got involved. This is an uglier fight than we've seen recently. 1987, Big 8 tournament tied at 65. Lee Coward, courageous! Missouri wins it 67 to 65. In 1990, these two teams met as top five teams twice. John McIntyre drained the three. Missouri won it 77 71. And in fact, they did it again in Lawrence, winning the matchup, being a number one Kansas team. 2006, no time remained. And Christian Moody at the free throw line, he missed a couple, went to overtime. Missouri pulled it out 89 to 86. And then 2009, Game tied at 60. Dyer Taylor for the win. But that is the last time that Missouri has beaten Kansas. Since then, the Jayhawks have owned this rivalry. And of course, tonight it will be a frenzied atmosphere. Missouri and Kansas, how well. And Michael Dixon and Kim English know each other. Do they speak the same language? Everybody inside Mizzou Arena on the same page. Here come the Tigers on college game day. We'll play a little know your teammate, shoot for money. Lots of stuff coming up. That's Perot Field, the home of Gary Pinkle's football Tigers. And National Signing Day was this past Wednesday. Hubert, I know that you love teams that get dudes. And let me tell you something. Pinkle got himself a dude at wide receiver. The number one wide receiver in the country, Doriel Green Beckham, deciding to stay home and play for the Tigers as they head into the SEC. This crowd, he came to a basketball game last week. They loved him. They chanted for him. And he'll be welcomed by the Zoo crew and the Antlers and all of the guys. Now, the last time College Game Day football was here, they got in the basketball act as well. Kim English wanted to lobby for us to come. That's Kim holding up the sign that says, Game Day, come back for basketball. Hey, Kim, ask and ye shall receive. Here we are in Columbia. What a great atmosphere this has been <laughs> all morning. Uh, when I think about Kansas, I think about a uh, big rivalry between us and them, hatred between fans. If you want to win the Big 12, no doubt it has to go through Kansas. I anticipate it being a, a very vibrant crowd and uh, enthusiastic uh, uh, environment. I would like to win four times this year for, the, for our seniors so we can go out on top. But when we're on the court between those lines, then we're like total enemies until the buzzer sounds and one of us are victorious. I, I feel like if we lost every game this year and we won that one game, it'd be successful seasons. There you see Jesse Hall in the columns and stand. 
Columns may stand for more than a century, but conference affiliation does not. You see this continue to be played no matter what conference these schools are in. Missouri and Kansas, Jay, have to play. They should play. I, th I think they do have to play. I think it's the right thing to do for the fans. It's the right thing to do for the players. And it's what competitors do. Like, time to play, competitors come to play. And I don't see how either Kansas or Missouri, anybody with a straight face could say, I'm a competitor, but I don't want to play a rival or I don't want to play another good team. That doesn't make any sense. Well, you got We're going to put the pressure on. We're going to get these games played. But there's going to be some pressure on Kim English coming up, playing know your teammate. And there's been some pressure on him to perform as a senior, too. I was just so caught up on all the things that were going to happen. I got lost in the process. I kind of forgot about the process. I forgot about the things that made my team successful. And uh, that kind of came back to bite me in the butt. There were some flaws in Kim English's game last year, but as Colleen Dominguez tells us, wait, I'll finish. A big case of senioritis kicked in, wiped the slate clean, and fueled by a familiar verse, English is proving to be quite the senior. I keep everything in this book. I write about each game practices, the morale of the team, I keep how many turnovers I had, and how many rebounds I had. I keep everything in here. And I have the poem in here because I want to read it. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too. It's a great poem. If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too. That teaches humility, along with confidence, along with not being naive. You can doubt me, but I know I can do it. Kim English has had to hold on to that confidence, even as he faced doubters in his past. As a child and teen, he suffered from stuttering. I couldn't talk when I was younger, because a uh, speech impediment that, uh, that haunted me. It was just, just great to, to come home and, and play in, in front of our, our, our friends and family. I couldn't hold a sentence, I couldn't hold a conversation unless I was 100% comfortable around you. Uh, it was, was hard, like, like not ever um, coming home and, and playing in front of your fans and having hugs after the, a game waiting for you. Well, I taught myself strategies. If I could feel a word wasn't about to come out clear, I'd just switch it mid-sentence where I would start a beat, a rhythm. I'd pat my leg, or I'd pat my shoulder or my heart just to get words out. And I don't know, it just got better. If you can dream and not make dreams your master, if you can think and not make thoughts your aim, if you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same, after a solid sophomore year, English struggled last season, averaging just 10 points per game and shooting only 37% from the floor. I had a lot of success my sophomore season, and I kind of got caught up in what I wanted to do after my junior season. I wanted to leave school early, go to the NBA. I forgot about the things that made my team successful. After the season, English declared for the NBA draft but did not get the feedback he hoped for. He returned to school and tried out for the USA's World University Games team. But when he was cut from that team, English hit rock bottom. His feelings at that point in time, from a basketball standpoint, was not good. I mean, he struggled, to, you know, being cut from a team. I think he really realized how hard he has to work to get where he wants to be. Left corner, English, a three. Bang! He buries it. This season, English is a team leader, averaging 14.1 points per game and is shooting 51% from the field. It makes me look at last year like a blessing. You need to put all individual goals aside to reach the true team success. If you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance run, yours is the earth and everything that is in it. And which is more, you'll be a man, my son. And Kim English has been the man for Missouri this year after Lawrence Bowers was hurt early in the season. He slid down to the four spot and has created one of the most difficult matchups in all of college basketball. But now the question is, 
how well does he match up with his teammate Michael Dixon, the Missouri six man joining us here for a little Know Your Teammate. By the way, impressed with your literary scholarship there. Very impressive, my friend. Oh, well, thank you. I uh, got to learn how to speak. There, very well, I would say. Okay, you guys know how this game is played. You're each going to try to predict what the other one said. By the way, more than 20 texts have been exchanged between these two. That's a lie. Preparation. That is not a lie. You a told lie. me no. yesterday it was true. This is all <laughs> off the top of the head. No texts have been exchanged. Okay, okay. <laughs> we're going we're to put some truth serum in you soon. But here's the first question I'm going to ask you. Don't peek. Ask you what you think Michael said, Kim. Right. Here's the question. Tonight's game, Coach Haith and the entire coaching staff, they get thrown out. They get upset with the officials. <laughs> You've got to call over a college game day analyst to draw up a final play. Who do you think Michael said he would like to see come over and draw up that play? Um, we're a lot alike, and uh, we, uh, we follow Jay Billis on Twitter and watch a lot of the games he does. I'm, I'm probably going to think uh, that he said Jay Billis. Michael, what did you say? He, he first said Digger, and he goes, no, no, Jay. Yeah, Jay. No, he's right. That's the wrong sound. That's right. He went with Jay later. <laughs> Michael, what do you think Kim said? Toss that one away. Um, he just gave you a big hint. Jay Billis. Oh, I did. I did. That's okay. I'm, I'm, good. I'm good with that one. All right. Two for two. Give me Michael's celebrity crush. He likes <laughs> a lot of people. <laughs> Are a lot of them in this crowd, too? He, li he likes a lot of tri-delts and a lot of delta gambits. <laughs> but uh, he, also, he also likes sideline reporter Holly Rowe. What do you got? Holly, Holly Rowe, Rowe, ladies and gentlemen. Wait, I'm going to save that for Holly. You know she's uh, here, right? Uh, we'll, we'll save that for Holly. Who did he say? Who did um, Kim say? Kim Kardashian. These guys are on fire. <laughs> what do you think one word Michael said to describe Kansas? Um, he gives me grief about being a big man and uh, how I struggle matching up with bigger guys. So he, he, he probably said big. And you said? Nagging. Nagging. Well, he said mainly they're fans, the right? Fans. Yeah, oh, yeah more so they fans rough. than the players. Okay, yeah. that's a miss. What do you think Kim said one word was to describe Kansas? Um... No, I did not say rock shot. That's not what he said. <laughs> um, we got four Kansas fans in the whole building. He talked. Well, he talked about how their story program. So story. the answer is, and what did you say, Kim? Story. That's impressive. That's as as impressive an answer as we've had. Now, give me one word you think Michael used that would describe how the fans feel about Kansas. Ooh, disgust. And you said, insert explicit content. <laughs> what do you think Kim said? Um, hatred. Hatred? And you said, hate. Yes, I'm winning. We're celebrating hate. <laughs> okay, earlier in the show, you went to College Game Day football, October 2010, Missouri right. beat Oklahoma. You held up a sign, and you said, College Game Day, come here for basketball. Yeah. Okay, Michael holds up a College Game Day sign if he were up here. What do you think he would put on it? What do you think he said he would put on it? Um, follow at M, the number one, Mike Dixon Jr. on Twitter. I already do that. Did you say that? College Game Day, come back every year. <laughs> Hey, we're for that. Now, what do you think Kim said? Well, I know, I know Kimmy's a big J. Billis fan, so uh, he probably so told So he's the one, huh? He's the one J. Billis fan? No, no. big J. Bill, J. Oh, Billis okay. fan, but he probably told him to follow him. Something like that. Follow J. Billis. You guys did a great job. Very impressive. <laughs> Good luck tonight. Twitter licious. <laughs> is Jay Billis, would you really say he's the trellis? He is he's true. the trellis. He's All right. True. Real recognized real. That's it. All right. Kim, Michael, All congratulations. Right. Thanks a lot. All right. You know these guys can shoot. Let's see if we can. Uh, Kansas, Missouri, who wins it? I think it's going to be Missouri. They can score. They take care of the basketball. And I think the difference maker is going to be Kim English at the power four position. I don't think Kansas can match up with him out there on the perimeter. I look for Missouri to win here at home. Even though Kansas had five guys in double figures at Iowa State, other things broke down. Rebounding, turnovers, as well as missed free throws. Missouri wins this game tonight. I think it's going to come down to the quickness and the pressure that Missouri can apply in this game offensively and defensively. I like the Tigers to win at home.
And one of the things you'll see tonight is how well did both teams channel their emotion. All of the things surrounding this rivalry coming to an end after this year. The closing chapter in Columbia tonight on ESPN. That's after a full day of basketball. We'll see you later. That matchup playing out tonight. Well, you know, Reese is under the chaos here. But the matchup, I think we're going to see some zone defense out of Missouri. I think they'll have a very tough time handling the interior with English, for example, playing with the and then trying to guard Robinson. I think ultimately you'll see them rotate into a zone. That means the burden's going to be on Kansas to make some perimeter shots. Taylor's going to have to be sensational. The last time that they lost here, when you think about Missouri, they've won 12 in a row. Last time they lost was Kansas on March 5th. I think right now you look at player of the year candidates, Reese, certainly Robinson would be my choice. He's been a dominant player, and he's been a major factor why Kansas has been highly rated. You look at Missouri, we see superb quickness, great perimeter plot, and Ratliff inside leads the nation in field goal percentage. It'll be really interesting to see who wins the matchups, to the bigs or to the smalls, because remember this, they're going to have to guard as well when you look at Missouri. They're going to have to guard them, but they're also, Kansas has to guard the likes of English, who can flat out shoot the three. They have been able to shoot it very well, and English has had a resurgent senior season. And Dick, Missouri, with it being on its way to the SEC next year, they desperately want to go out with a Big 12 championship. Kansas wants nothing more than to stop them. How important, in your judgment, is this game tonight to Missouri's hopes of winning the Big 12 title? You know, Reese, I think it's very important because it may be the last time they play here. So you certainly want to win the board of war on your floor. But I agree with you. If the goal is to win the Big 12 championship, they better protect their home court and win here because they have a date on February 25th up in Lawrence. Also keep in mind, Reese, some big, big factors if they want to play in the regional in St. Louis. I think you want to get the edge against them. So this is a big game for Frank A. I think it's even bigger than it is to the Jayhawks right now because it's on their floor. These people are going wild. Dick, they've been going wild. Easy there, big fella. In Ohio Valley play. Michael Dixon has been a terrific player off the bench for Missouri this year. Well, he's averaging 12 points per game. He's second off the bench only to Deion Waiters from Syracuse. Had a terrific game against Texas. When you can bring that kind of firepower in off the bench and know that he's basically a six starter, that's an awfully nice thing. This is the number one seed, but like you heard earlier, to play in St. Louis in the regional to become a Final Four team. I, I think the rivalry between Kansas and Missouri is so good it's beyond this game, and I mentioned it. Back here in Missouri Arena, the spotlight's on us. The lights are down because Truman, the mascot, rappelling down by the jumbotron in the middle of the court, riling up this Missouri crowd. They're bitter rivals, the Kansas Jayhawks coming in here. I haven't lost to Missouri since 2009. Tonight, Truman, who had a great... I'm just glad Truman didn't fall. If you saw the bowl game when Missouri played in the Independence Bowl, Truman, Truman fumbled the glass trophy and shattered it into about a billion pieces. So I'm glad there was no similar type of accident with Truman rappelling into the arena tonight. Lights up inside seven and a half minutes to go until tip-off between the Tigers and the Jayhawks. Holly Rose working the sideline tonight with Frank Hay, the Missouri head coach. Coach, you've had game day here all day. A lot's been going on this week. What specifically have you done to focus your guys in for the task at hand tonight? Well, we've, we've talked about it, number one. I think that's the, uh, we talked to our guys about being focused on doing things the way we've done it all year. Uh, it has been a busy week. It's been a busy day. Uh, thank God we got seniors. You've got small seniors, though, Coach. You've got some undersized guys. How do you plan on defending their big men, Thomas Robinson and Jeff Withy? Well, we've got to do our work early. We can't allow those guys to get deep post position. And then when they catch it, we've got to, and when the shot goes up on the rim, we've got to block them out because that's when it gets tough. This is your first border war, your first year here at Missouri. What are you expecting tonight? A lot of passion, a lot of energy, and hopefully a great ball game. Thanks, Coach. Thank you.
This is going to be one of the most frenzied atmospheres we'll see this season. The big smile on Kim English's face. Several of the players telling me yesterday, this is Frank Hayes' first moment in this rivalry. They said, I'm not sure even Coach Hayes knows what to expect in terms of the intensity of the crowd as they get ready for Kansas to come in tonight. But Kansas, they want to win again, beat the Tigers again. It's about their execution in this game, Hubert. Well, this is Missouri's first team that they are playing that has a big front line that plays big. And when you're talking about Kansas... Behind the paint for Missouri, Ricardo Ratliff is key. He's making three quarters of his field goal attempts. That leads the nation. He's on pace to set a Division I record for field goal percentage this season as we take you to the... I place his own tonight, even though I haven't played it all year. We saw Frank Hayes a moment ago, and here's Bill Self coming out. You know, Frank, I uh, see resplendent in that gold tie. He said early in his Missouri career, he made the mistake of wearing a blue suit and a blue tie. And one of the students kept yelling at him from the stands, hey, hey, it's black and gold. Hey. But this was this drew a roar from the crowd a few moments ago. This young man, Doriel Green Beckham, the number one wide receiver in the country on Wednesday National Signing Day. He chose to stay in his home state and play for Missouri. And I mean the student section. Flat went nuts when the big fella 6'6 wide receiver came in to the house and made his way up into the crowd. All right, we got Kansas and Missouri coming up. Just about a minute. Who wins the game? I like Missouri. I like them defensively. I like on the offensive end. They can take care of the basketball. And they have two starting point guards in Flip Pressy and Michael Dixon. I think they're going to dominate the game, dominate the ball. I like Missouri winning. I like Missouri because I really think Kansas is going to turn the ball over. And that's easy points for Missouri the way they get up and down the floor. I also think that Ricardo Ratliff inside, he's going to challenge Robinson. Robinson's got 15 double doubles, so you're going to attack him, get him in foul trouble early, but Missouri wins this game. You know, Missouri's at home, and how about this place? I mean, how about this atmosphere? How can you lose in this atmosphere? That, that's why I'm taking Missouri. They're at home. This is phenomenal. It, it is a great atmosphere. Jay talks about it a lot. The crowd might not impact the game per se. It certainly impacts all the surroundings and the energy, and the energy is thick and intense here in Columbia. Tip-off with Dan and Dick and Holly coming up after the break. An incredible atmosphere here in Columbia. Inside, sold out of Mizzou Arena. The Kansas Jayhawks and the Missouri Tigers. Welcome to the Infinity College basketball tip-off. And welcome to an event we're awfully excited to be here for, as are better than 15,000 people wearing black and gold here tonight as their beloved Tigers take on the hated rivals, the border showdown, the Kansas Jayhawks, who have won seven consecutive, one or shared seven consecutive Big 12 regular season titles. Who's going to win it this year? Well, that will in part be decided by who wins tonight. Kansas 8-1, Baylor 8-2, Missouri 7-2 as they get ready for this game tonight. Dan Schulman, Dick Vitale, we'll hear from Holly Rowe shortly. How big is this game? Well, you know, think number one, you just mentioned it. If you want to win a Big 12 championship, you better win this game if you're Missouri because you have a date on February 25th. You have to go up to Lawrence, and you got to go through Lawrence to win the Big 12. Number two, hey, what about seeding? Number three, the regional in St. Louis, but most of all, Dan, number four, pride, baby. This might be the last game here in the border war. You want to win this game on your floor. The other side, Mr. Pressy, he creates opportunities, leads the league in steal and assists, gets the ball to Rattler, who leads the nation in field goal percentage. <laughs>
ready to introduce the Missouri Tigers here in Columbia. Enjoy the atmosphere. For the and final six, time six, ever six, in six, Columbia, six, Kansas and Missouri coming up. Thanks for watching the Infinity College Basketball Tip-Off live from Columbia. Now let's see how our coaches are inspired. Bringing that extra energy to the building. Our guys play better. They play harder. It's like giving them that extra boost to play as well as they can play. The best home courts are the ones where there's energy, and we're spoiled to play in Allen Fieldhouse, which is arguably as good as home court as there is in college basketball. Inspiration is contagious. Guys are going to be juiced, and they're going to be ready. But one thing I will say to them is you work your tails off to play in games like this. So let's not have any what ifs. And so the Kansas game is a robbery game. It's inspirational for us. I expect it to be a lot of energy in the building. I think our guys will play their very best, and I know Kansas will play their very best, and it'll be a funny. Spread some inspiration of your own. Visit e A top ten matchup. Number eight, Kansas, is here at the Mizzou Arena to take on number four, Missouri. Just the third time ever these two programs have met when both of them were ranked in the top ten. A look at the starting lineups, beginning with Kansas. Tyshawn Taylor, Thomas Robinson, the two stars for this team. Elijah Johnson does a little bit of everything. Travis Relliford, a terrific defender. Jeff Whitney having his best season. For Missouri, they're small, they're quick, they're tough, they share the ball. Anybody can score. Ricardo Ratliff, the big guy in the middle, shooting 75% from the floor on the season. The guards get some of the credit for that. Yeah, really, when you talk about Bressy, he's done a phenomenal job, Dan, creating opportunities. The question mark now will be, who's going to get the edge? In the, the matchup, 6-6, six, six, Kim English, really a guard of a play in the four spot, defending seven-footer Jeff Whippy, Tyshawn Taylor with a three. Beginning of the five starter, shot clock is down to five for Mizzou, now down to three. Deep one. For Denman. He has been really struggling shooting the ball again at 5.3. Followed when you take a look at a guy like English, who is a guard now playing over at the four slot. Remember Villanova made that great run, played four guards. They create problems for you as well. You got a guard there. Guy transferred out deep into the shot clock again. Phil Pressey hands it off and Ratliff lays it in. And that's why he leads the nation. Well, Frank Hay, first-year coach here in Missouri, got to be the leading contender for National Coach of the Year. He's you certainly right up there. And hey, what about the job being done? We saw them against Notre Dame. Kansas City as well. They have one at Baylor. Taylor again. Eight already for Taylor. I mean, good spot tonight. Ratliff again. Boy, tough shot that time. You know, right now, shooting 74% for the year. Wide open look, Relliford. I mean, that was wide open, baby, and he took advantage of it. The big thing is the way Kansas shot the ball early in this game. Three for four from the trifecta. That's a big one for Missouri. Marcus Denman, their do-everything guard, has been in a team. And I never thought they'd be in a position where they're at. And I think the great sportster of none. He does everything. 
reasonably well. Phil Pressy does that pretty well, doesn't I'll tell you he? That. He can go from one end to the other really quick. Pressy went the length of the court and scored. Kansas has done an early great job with transition defense. They haven't allowed Missouri to get any man or strong inside player. Then you never know what it does to chemistry, though, Dan. This team has phenomenal chemistry. They do, and it's largely the same cast of characters as there was a year ago. Of course, a new coach in a different style and a very unusual lineup because of the arc. They're closing out on him in a hurry. The cut by English for the bucket. What a quick release. He made that real lateral cut across the line. Robinson driving on Moore. And on the alternating possession, it'll be Kansas ball when we come back. Kim English, not just a three-point shooter. The cut and the bank shot. It's a one-point game. They're piled up. They're trying to get the band to play. That was in 1961 in the aftermath of a of a fight in a football game between the two programs. Only 100. Missouri has had its moments 11 times since 1990. They've defeated a Kansas team when Kansas 20 rebounds against Missouri in the two games combined. Two games combined. Relaford his second. He goes to the bench. Robinson goes to the bench as well at Kansas State and at Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State the last five minutes was a nightmare and a kid Nash had a major Ooh. game. Denman got crushed. And he still converted. And made the basket. He's from Kansas City, you know. He said no to the Jayhawks. Here he is playing the Missouri. Do you think he wants this game badly? There he is driving the lane. He he's going to earn a three the tough way. He was and like right into Wesley. He was the leading scorer coming back to the conference from last year. By the way, Denman and Relaford, high school rivals. Nine. Well, you come out with all his nuggets. It's always candy top dish. <laughs> top down, baby. Top down. Mark. He looks a little passive tonight. He doesn't look that aggressive. Denman's aggressive and gets the roll. And Robinson just stepped away. Then close off the driving angle. Oh, they love it here in Columbia. Oh, baby. Oh, I love this, Danny Showman. To be a thing of the past. Five for six, Dick. And three for three from three-point range. Already 14 points for Denman. He's played brilliantly here. He's a Kansas City kid. Has a lot of pride. He goes across the lane. Great hands. We've already had six lead changes here in the first 13 minutes of the game. English from the corner, yes. He can shoot that three. I'll tell you a big story right now, man. Robinson is one for A little bit concerned if they went zone to Missouri, would his team settle or would Robinson fight to get inside like he did right there? Right there, a little screen and roll. His man off the glass and let somebody else on his team go get the rebound. He's the guy who gets the free throw. You know, when you're a great shooter like he is, Damian Lillard had 40 the other day. People out there, remember that name, Lillard. L-I-L-L-A-R-D. Damian, he can flat out score. He leads the nation. He with two, Wesley with two, both on the bench. And Kansas, I think we have a vibe. Well, that's because you said with he's got those two. I'm going to tell you this, if this comes down to free throw shooting, the edge big time late in the English into the contact, handed it off to Moore for the jam. They can put the ball on the deck and get inside. English lost it, Moore found it. Must be a big game, seems like half of the former Missouri Tiger football programs back here. All these guys in the NFL, there's Blaine Gabbard, Jeremy Macklin's here. Big night. A big night. All these guys have come back, football stars. They're going to get a lot of football when they go to the SEC. <laughs> Alabama, Nick Saban. I mean, yeah, we don't know if Kansas will play Missouri anymore in the basketball. The decisions were made. The conference realignment is Dixon. Hits the three. They were football decisions. Cash, cash. We all understand right. English with eight for Missouri. Robinson with six for Kansas. The second leading scores. Dixon the reverse. I tell you one thing, he will point out quickly at 21 the other night against him. There he goes. A little one-on-one, -on -one, and there's the reverse. He uses the basket to seal off the defensive player. And really get four in a tournament. You need that size of the Anthony Davises and people like Terrence Jones. Yeah. Syracuse.
Kentucky, of course, has a ton of size, athleticism, shot blocking ability, but Missouri has proven. Mark Jones plays a little bit down the yes. perimeter. A steal. It's an 11 to nothing run for the Tigers. What a spurt. They're explosive. That's a T.O., baby. They're rocking and rolling here in Columbia. So quick in the passing lane, Stick, and they get a lot of offense off their defense. Yeah, they really do a terrific job. Anticipate really well. Five seconds. Dixon inside. Ratliff can't finish. And the first half will come to a close here with the Missouri Arena. Tyshawn Taylor leading all scores with 17 points, half of Kansas's points. Marcus Denneman with 16, Kim English with 10. Missouri leads. Frank Haith is with Holly Rowe. Well, Coach, what do you think of the first half of your first border war so far? Intense, hard fought. Uh, you know, guys are battling out there. We're battling on the boards. We're doing what we need to do. How has getting to the free throw line been a big difference for you in this first half? Well, we have to. We got to continue to attack. We got to pressure. I mean, put pressure on them by driving the ball and throwing the ball inside. And how did getting them in a little bit of foul trouble also help your cause? Well, we're in foul trouble. We caught a wrap, then hardly played that half. All right, coach. We'll keep our eye on it. All right, Holly, thank you. Good first half foul trouble for both teams and neither team that deep. Missouri leads Kansas 39-34. When we come back, Reese Davis and the guys deliver the UPS halftime report from Columbia. The entertaining first half, 39-34, Missouri with the lead. Marcus Denman had been struggling with his stroke. He'd hit five of his last 31 threes coming into the game. Three for three in the first half. 16 points for the Tigers. The five-point lead for Frank Hayes' team at the break Saturday. Big guys have to play better. So far, when we talked about the matchups and who was going to dominate their matchups, the smalls for Missouri and the bigs for Kansas, well, it's been the small guys for Missouri that have really won that fight. Kansas has not gotten a lot of second-chance points. They have not gotten the ball inside very much. Thomas Robinson and Jeff Rickey, those guys haven't scored enough. What, have they combined for eight points? They haven't done enough. They've got to do more. If you're going to have a size advantage, you have to take advantage of that. I don't think Kansas has done a very good job of that in the first half. That's right. Starting us on the perimeter, they're packing it in. We've got to make them pay outside. You know, Holly, I just said that. They're going to bring the ball to the big guy, and there it is right there, yeah, Holly. Nice. We're going to make you a coach, Holly. Bring <laughs> the ball inside. I'm the bat. Pressy picks it up. No look to English. Can't let him shoot the ball. That's why some club is going to absolutely... Seven Big 12 regular season championships and a winning percentage dig of better than 83%. But right now, he's got... Robinson lost it on the way up. Got it back and finishes. Boy, he is playing with some determination here in the second half. He's a different player. His mindset, you can see the aggressive play. Withy the steal. Kansas looking for the lead. And they've got it. Great jam. Get a T.O. And Frank Hank not happy at all. He is not a happy camper. She really did a great job in transition. And Robinson came out so aggressive. Elijah Johnson makes it a three-point lead. 17-3 against Missouri. 17-3. Dixon. They needed that one. Tell you what, he makes big plays, makes big shots. Robinson comes up top to get. Driving on Ratliff. Left-handed layup is good. I'm telling you right now, he's my choice. Some basket again quieted the crowd just for a moment. English. That'll live him up again. The three, baby, the three ball has revolutionized the game, and they utilize it. He hands on English. You know, I think the quickness of the game is really, uh, great play there. The quickness of the game has affected with him. Timeout. Freshman Nadir Tharp from Worcester Mass is into the game. Talented, but has had some trouble in a recent game. Looking for Robinson inside. Relifer finds an open T hand. Got it. And that's what they want him on the floor to do. Make the three. Zaire Tater tries to win it. He gets it. 1.3 seconds left. Aldridge puts up a oh, 
It's been a rivalry that began more than a <laughs> and it was a 21 to 20 win for Mizzou. Here is Holly Rowe. You guys Taylor, baseline, got it. First deuce here in the second half by Taylor. Had that big first down. Dick, this is the largest lead of the night. Hey, Kansas has done a great job taking that speed, making them play five on five. Dixon, another big shot at a critical time. I call him big shot, Dixon. I mean, he makes it. Michael Dixon now says, why not? I'll just shoot right over the top of the defense. Such a luxury. Outstanding point guards in the game at the same time. Phil Pressey on the bench right now. Matt Pressey with the layup. Nice little drive by Matt Pressey. And a little matchup right there with Taylor and Dixon. Phil likes what he sees from his big brother. First points of the night for the year. A lot of pride. We talk about CDs and we talk about all that. But the pride is just see the conversion on the drive by Pressey. Cuts it to two, but the real pride factor is this might be the last game between these two. And you want those bragging more guys down in the box. Gonna play you a little bit more one on one. Denman with two already tonight. Well, he's not gonna miss this one, I'll tell you that. Something about it. 17 and three. He is against Missouri. Bill Sutton. Two of three. One point game. Ratliff on the bench with four. With English. But he's not doing anything trying to get free for the ball. Tehan, yes. Another three from the corner by Connor Tehan. And he. Robinson again. Turnaround. Got it. What a challenge. How big has he been here in the second half? 19 in the second half. 25 on the night. Robinson again. 8 for 11 here in the second half. Taylor to the baseline with a jam, and Kansas has its largest lead of the game. To that inside. One, one national championship, numerous regular season and conference tournament titles. Denman inside. Nice drive by Denman. You expect your veteran player to come up and make a big play. Chance for a three-point opportunity. Trying to get this crowd back in action. They've been fired up all day. A oh, nice little stutter dribble. Nice stutter dribble, protected the ball really well, squared his body to the bed. Four for Radliff. Frank Haith is bringing more in for Kansas will run the clock down. For a while, anyways, until Robinson wave it off. An offensive foul is the call. Gets him a little hook call. That's a bad, bad call. That's a bad call. Number four on Robinson. Suddenly things are tightening up here. A little dive job right there. Denman. Got it! Oh, what a big three. How big has Denman been? How big was the game? We got a ball game there, Schumann. We got a ball game for the Bragging Rights. And the ball. Border Wars. Denman with two big plays, the last two possessions. Six. This was no routine three. Coming off a screen, having to go straight up vertically instead of drifting and knocking it down. Tough shot. That was a big time trifecta. A big time trifecta, but he's been a big time player all year. Struggled a little bit shooting the ball. Big 12 competition. Kansas right now. Missouri can give another foul. They got a turnover. They got a turnover. Terrific job defensively. Shot selection so big now. Boys so big, a very experienced Missouri team. A lot of seniors. 20 to shoot. He wants to go to the basket. He wants to go to the basket. 26 already for Denman. He'll launch. He'll hit. He feels it. He feels it. He feels a good timeout by Bill Sell. The officials have ruled it a two, but will go to the monitor to make sure. Unbelievable plays down the stretch by Marcus Denman. Oh, Marcus Denman has been magical. 
Marcus has been absolutely magnificent. The three up man. Right there. Is he behind the line? Oh, that's a three. That's a three. That's to me. a three. I mean, I got one bad eye, but that's why the right eye I'm looking. That looks like a three. And they have put another point on the scoreboard. And Missouri has the lead. Good bit of officiating. They can serve it. Wow. Lunch going to do a frenzy. It's a 9-0 run to Missouri. Edmund scored nine straight points. A foul called against Phil Pressy. How you can hear the whistle in this place is beyond me. First now, Taylor to make the play for himself or for Robinson. Looking for himself, and he's fouled. He is so confident with the ball in his hands. He, and so is the zoo crew. He's shooting right into them. Sub said you guys are gonna have a lot. Uh, how big is this if you're a Kansas fan? Oh, it comes up empty. I'm gonna take time off here, baby. Kansas will get the ball back no matter what. Only about a five and a half second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. Dixon's the guy who likes to make plays at the end as well. Taylor the foul. Phil Pressey will go to the line. Missouri, as you mentioned, such a good free, free throws for the Tigers. Conversion here would make him a hero. Big man on the campus. <laughs> Missed the front end. Will Bill Self let him play it out or call a timeout? He wants a timeout. On a road, I would get that timeout. You want to make sure to get it right back to him. Johnson will bring it over. Looking for Taylor. They're going to get right back to him. Taylor looking for the drive. Offensive foul. Great defense. Incredible defense. Squared his body right in front of him and beat him to the spot. He beat him to the spot. Watch right here. Watch this great defense right there. A terrific job. Michael Dixon, Dixon. who switched on to Taylor. When Johnson handed the ball off, takes the charge. Did a phenomenal job right there. Squared his body, beat him to the spot. Shot after shot after shot. Yeah, he made nine points in a row when they were in trouble. I mean, they talked earlier, Dan, about that. He was challenged on that shot. Here he is right now. He's going to want the ball back. And he's shooting over the top of defense, defensive players. Denman's been a PT beer, man, a prime time performer on a game-winning shot by Michael Dixon. You know, Kansas led 71-63. No timeouts for Kansas. Even with a make, it's a one-possession game. You gotta put some pressure. Slow him down a little bit. Slow him down. See, I would if we got the five seconds or more, I wouldn't let him shoot that three. Taylor. So I wouldn't let him shoot the three. I'd foul him, man. I wouldn't let him get a three off. But don't foul him, I was shooting the three. Johnson. Missouri wins. <laughs> Frank Hayes gets a little feeling of what the border war is about. And it's a joyous feeling. The Missouri Tigers close the game on an 11 to nothing run. And they win what just might have been the last game ever between these two schools here in this building. And here in this city in Columbia. They'll meet again in Lawrence. That could be it for a rivalry that stretches back more than 100 years. Just such a tough loss for Kansas, which looked like they had the game in hand, Dick, with a couple of minutes left. They really did. They were up eight points, and then it was the Denton shot. He just was absolutely sensational down the end. Holly Rowe is with Marcus Denton. Marcus, as excited as you are for this win, why were you telling the crowd, don't rush the floor right now? I mean, because we know Kansas is a team, but I mean, we're at home and we expect to win. We prepare all week, and uh, I'm glad my guys came down and fought hard.
You were down by eight with two minutes to play. You guys closed this game out on a 9-0 run. How were you able to do that? It's about heart, man. Everybody buying in, getting stops, playing together on both ends of the floor. We came out with the win. I hate to use the S word, but Marcus, you had been in a slump. What was different for you tonight? Uh, I mean, well, I shot the same shots I always shoot. I, I pride myself in taking good shots, and I know that I work on my game um, night in, night out, and I do those shots with fall. So Coach uh, has that um, spirit and keep telling me to keep shooting the ball, uh, whether I'm making it or missing. And tonight, uh, I was fortunate enough to make shots. For a Kansas City kid, what does this mean for you to close out this rivalry with a win? Uh, I mean, it's just really special. Um, I'm glad, I'm proud of my guys, everybody on our coaching staff, and um, I mean, this, this ain't it for us though. We gotta get ready for Monday. Thank you. Thank you. What a win for Missouri. Big 12 standings, Kansas 8-2, Baylor 8-2, Missouri 8-2. After Missouri wins here at home tonight of the Jayhawks, 74-71, to led by 29 points from their senior, Marcus Denman. For Dick Vitale and Holly Rowe, I'm Dan Schulman saying thanks for watching. Sports Center is coming up next. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. What a night in Columbia. So long from Mizzou Arena. Absolutely. You look at those three teams, guys, at the top of the Big 12. Among them, they have 17 top 50 wins. 17, but only one of the three has beaten the other two that they're tied with, and that's Mizzou, and that's why they go on the top line in Monday's practice.